What is popping, my kings and queens and gods and goddesses? Welcome to Leo season and welcome to your August 2023 horoscopes for your rising sun. Let's not forget, child. Let's not forget. Woo! We are bringing the drama this month. If you have not noticed, this Leo rising is on and activated, okay? This month, August, is a crazy month, okay? It is a little bit of a roller coaster, so just be prepared. I'm not going to lie to you. There's a lot of highs and maybe some lows, but it is all going to be full of massive change and it's all going to lead to better things we just have to trust and believe and hope and pray to the sudden gods that this is uh all for the better okay i really truly believe it is though so we've been through worse we've been through worse okay it's not like the the worst astrological weather ever but uh we just had a lot of dramatic things happening this month for this leo season it's uh right on brand right on brand you know so sit back relax grab a drink grab a crystal and uh, make sure that you watch your horoscope all the way through because i will be checking and also if you would like more from me if you would like more content from me if you would like to see what else i offer make sure to check out my website down below i also still do personal one-on-one -on -one readings right now so if you would like that check everything out below and with that being said let's go ahead and get into your horoscope for your rising sign for august 2023 Alrighty, my fellow leo risings kings and queens out there welcome to your fabulous horoscope for august 2023 boo this is a busy month for us okay we have a busy full month of shit coming up so mark your calendars okay we have we got shit going on this month okay and my best advice to you as we are starting august and you are if you are leo rising is to be unavailable this month <laughs> be unavailable okay just be unavailable don't don't just don't okay just don't we don't have time we don't have energy we have to really 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 take this month and focus on ourselves and be very unapologetic about it okay it has to happen it has to happen boo i'm sorry i know we have sh other shit that we want to do or that we're interested in and it doesn't mean that we can't do some of that other shit i'm not saying to isolate yourself and you know all of that i am just saying that this is a month that is crazy. It's fucking crazy. And really, all it's really asking you to do is to reevaluate who you are, to fall back in love with you, to fall back in love with who you are, your identity, to reassess your values. And if you are committing to those values, if you're acting in a way that is, in al is aligned with those values, right? It is really asking you to get clear on who you are, your behavior, your personality, your identity, your internal world, and how you feel about certain things, right? Your commitments, your worth, your empowerment, your confidence, your heart, your desires. It is asking you to realign with all of these things. The relationship to yourself needs to be your number one fucking priority this month, okay? It needs to be top notch before anything and everything else. The relationship with yourself is so important right now. It is so crucial. The rest of this year is literally going to be built off of whatever is going on in your life right now. Whatever you're reassessing about yourself and where you're at in your life right now, whatever you're going through right now is literally building the foundation on whatever the rest, whatever is gonna come the rest of this year, right? So are you being yourself? Are you being authentic? This is a, a time where you are realizing again, what makes you special? And it may come with some difficulty at times, you know, with Venus retrograding in our sign. Um, we may be rethinking our appearance, our style, our body, our health, our energy, our, our vitality, how we are putting ourselves out there, how we're acting, how we're behaving in the world, right? And I've been taking a lot of notes of things that I've noticed and have thought about for us for this Venus retrograde because we are important, honey. <laughs> we are important and we are special, okay? So I've been taking notes just for you, <laughs> just for me and for you, right? It's like, what benefits me benefits you, you know? So just come on. Well, where the fuck are my notes? Um, Hello. Okay, sorry about that. I had to find where my notes went. But this month is so much about getting back aligned with your worth, right? Getting back aligned with your worthiness, the things that you feel make you worthy or the things that you feel make you unworthy. And are those things really making you unworthy at the end of the day? right? We also have a lot in terms of reconnecting to ourselves and our hearts and what's truly, truly, truly aligned with us in our integrity, within our pride, within our honor, right? These are the higher Leo qualities, right? If you are getting pulled in other directions that 
don't feel like they are in your integrity, that feel dramatic and messy and, you know, uh, egotistical. Those are some of the lower Leo traits that we want to just be aware of. It's okay. It'll probably happen for many people. It doesn't make you a bad person, honey. Um, we'll get through it. Okay. We will get through it, but just be aware. Uh, this is also about, like I said, considering that relationship with yourself. This is about your relationship to self and how that's going. You know, are you honoring yourself? Are you honoring your heart? Are you honoring your desires? Are you honoring your commitments? Are you honoring your values, right? How do you speak to yourself? How do you think about yourself? Where does that need to be cleaned up a little bit, made peace with? Where, like this is also about integration of other parts of us that maybe we haven't been integrating or maybe we've been at war with certain parts of ourselves, you know, especially after Mars moved through our sign. Um, and this Aquarius full moon coming in on August 1st, which, you know, we're going to talk about. And I'm going to try to do a separate video on, but, um, you know, the first part of this month is going to be really seeing where other people have possibly been making us feel certain ways about ourselves, where we have felt like alienated, neglected, rejected, denied or not a part of or not fitting in to certain situations, relationships and people and environments in our lives. Also, it's so much about this already because the South Node in Libra is in our third house, right, of our environments. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. This is also about seeing your worth again, seeing what makes you special again, right? And also, there is a lot going on this month in terms of sorting out your values and we're in alignment with those values like i was saying especially where you know those those misalignments with your values are affecting your long-term vision for yourself your goals and your career so where are things going on within you or with you that need to be mended that need to be made peace with because they are affecting your long-term vision for yourself your career how you show up in the world they're affecting your self-esteem with how you show up in the world. And some of these things could be habits. They could be, you know, uh, commitments, boundary issues, you know, things like this. It could be really anything, but there's something that you feel about yourself, right? Or that you're dealing with that, that comes back to you that may be kind of affecting how you are or aren't showing up in terms of your long-term vision goals and career and in the world in general. So it's about coming back to what makes you special, you know, what makes you different, what makes you special, what makes you shine and, and embracing that unapologetically, right? Just being yourself. So this is also, like I was saying a lot about this Libra South node because Venus rules Libra and Venus is retrograde in our sign. So we're going to see some of these Libra South node themes coming up um, with this Venus retrograde. So that means how your environment and the people around you on a day-to-day -day basis and the environments that you're in on a day-to-day -day basis and how you are compromising here, you know, or kind of considering other people or how these environments are influencing you and your decisions, right? Influencing your beliefs, your purpose, your direction, how you are maybe compromising too much of what you believe, too much of your passion, too much of your purpose, too much of your own like sense of direction in life for the environments that you're in and maybe that's holding you back in some way right so also with this you know it's so much about our morals as well where our morals are being influenced by other people uh in our environments or the environments themselves are influencing our morals and values and also keeping us away from our long-term vision our faith our purpose our beliefs things like that so that is what this month is very, very much about, as you will see when we go over it here in just a second now. Um, so yeah, so buckle up, Leo. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the actual astrology and all of the information and dates and all of that for the month ahead. So we start off the month right on the first with a full moon, closure in relationships. Again, I'm gonna try to do a separate video on this, um, but it's we're kind of starting the month off on a very revealing, uh, illuminating kind of note where we may see where certain relationships or friendships within our lives, certain people, especially close relationships and commitments within our lives are potentially, uh, you know, 
kind of not aligned or where there's a dynamic that's going on that's not entirely aligned or where our vision or goals for the future are not entirely aligned. And so it's like, we're not on the same page with something in our relationships. For some Leo Risings, this could be an ending of a certain committed or important relationship in your life. Uh, this could be where you just see like, we're just not the right fit. You know, it is a Venus retrograde though. So I would think that, you know, it, it may not be, it may come back around in some way, you know, just to throw that out there. But it is showing us where we can be ourselves, but still attract the right people. We don't have to dim ourselves down to fit in. We can shine and still be relatable, right? It's kind of the mixture between Leo and Aquarius. Uh, by being ourselves, we actually attract the right people, right? We don't have to try to stick out. We don't have to try to fit in. So a lot of the Leo Aquarian energy on this axis is, you know, about a lot of closure happening within relationships and, for some that can be sudden um, and deal with long-term goals or your career or the other person's career or the general direction in life, right? So this could definitely be a time where for some people this could be a very positive revelation where it's like you and another person are taking something to the next level and seeing the bigger vision. But for other people this could be, you know, an ending or a, a moment of closure in a relationship or a revelation or something being illuminated uh, in a relationship. So just kind of be on the lookout for that right in the very, right at the very beginning of August. Now, the other difficult part about the first few days of August is that we have this really annoying, testy energy of Virgo, Mercury and Virgo opposing Saturn and Pisces. Now we've been going through uh, Virgo and Pisces oppositions already. Um, we started going through them like mid to end July. So you've probably been feeling some of this already, a lot of delays and setbacks and a lot of having to trust versus having control and being organized and detailed about something, right? Especially to do with finances, financial projects, uh, shared resources or possessions with other people, especially with your partner, since Saturn rules the seventh, you know, this really makes me think a lot of Leo Risings could be in being getting involved in some kind of financial pursuit with a relationship, another person, um, an investment with another person, or it could just be your partner's finances or something financial going on with them in general. And so um, there could be, you know, just a lot of back and forth between your priorities and what works for you versus feeling kind of not listened to or feeling kind of neglected or denied or set back or uh, brushed off in some way. So there's kind of this duality, this polarity between elusiveness and evasiveness um, versus, you know, being detailed and, you know, doing things in the right way, you know, like doing things in an efficient way, in a timely manner, getting things done, being organized about it versus just being very carefree and evasive and like, yeah, whatever, you know, <laughs> this could also be some news coming in um, about a delay or a setback or something not working out in the way that you expected or having to take more time, especially financially, okay? But don't get too discouraged because right after that, we actually have a lot of beautiful things coming financially and career-wise for Leo Risings this month. So on the second and the third, we're going to have Mars trining Jupiter. And we could actually feel that even days before that. So we do have this really beautiful energy interactive energy coming in when it comes to the, our career and our financial sector, right? Our career and our income. It's like, you know, there's a lot of potentiality coming in. There's a lot of opportunity coming in, a lot of different avenues and ways that we could be bringing in more. We could be seeing a long-term potential, long-term future on like how to work smarter, not harder, how to, you know, maybe bring in more passive income or more abundance in some way, especially within our career and financially. So we really have this beautiful energy coming in where you know, maybe we're starting to get a lot of ideas and trying to organize these ideas in terms of career and long-term goals when it comes to our income and resources and streams of income, right? And how to make them work more efficiently for us, right? Because Virgo is really about rearranging things, reorganizing things, and helping things to work more efficiently, to be better, right? And so we're having a lot of ideas on how to make things better and perfect things in terms of our finances and our long-term goals, vision, and career, and how that, and that's going to really help with our finances, right? And so this is a really, really beautiful, beautiful energy uh, from, you know, 
like the first few days of the month of Mars trining Jupiter. So really be on the lookout for that. So then right around like the 7th to the 10th, we're going to have Venus retrograde and Leo squaring Uranus and Taurus. Now, this is going to be kind of a more, one of the more turbulent aspects I was talking about uh, in the beginning of, in the intro, um, how this month is kind of full of surprises and a lot of like highs, high highs and some potential lows. So this is a very curveball, risky, roll the dice kind of energy, surprising, shocking, unexpected, risky kind of energy. So I would just say, okay, like here, here are the warnings for you if you're Leo rising from like the 7th to the 10th, okay? I would not do anything risky with your appearance um, at this time because it may turn out completely differently than you expected. Um, but, or, or your body, like cosmetic, anything cosmetic, changing anything that could go wrong in some way, I would just wait until after these retrogrades are over because Mercury is then going retrograde at the end of the month. So um, just, this is just not a good time, right? Just to be all the way real with you. But what I can say though, is that um, this could definitely bring in a lot of surprising and shocking kind of urges, desires, temptations, or wants. So you could find yourself behaving very erratically or feeling very rebellious, feeling very um, almost like agitated in terms of wanting to do something that's going to benefit you, but it's like not working out. Or you may find yourself wanting to make some really big changes and shifts regarding who you are versus like your brand or your identity in the world or your career or how you show up within your career, right? So this could be a time where you're really rethinking your own identity, how other people see you in the world and how you want to show up in the world um, in your career, in your long-term goals, if you have what it takes, how you value yourself. Um, and this could, I mean, it could potentially also lead to a very liberating feeling of like, you know, screw it. Like I'm just going to be me, you know, or I'm going to you know, shift some things with my brand and, and really just be more of my eccentric self and let myself out, you know, a little bit more. So, but there definitely could be some things that come in. Um, on the downside, this could also be potentially that, you know, you find that there are some relationship shifts. Now, I wouldn't say that for sure, just because, you know, this isn't seventh house necessarily, but it is a Venus right? And so you could find that there are some things that come in relationship wise um, that you weren't expecting. Now that won't be for everybody. Um, or again, you could find yourself having desires or unexpected, unpredictable desires um, that, you know, or behaving in a way that you wouldn't normally behave in some way. So just watch out for that <laughs> around that time. But I think a lot of it is going to have to do with feeling kind of this pressure to really shift either who you are or who you are when you show up in the world, right? So then on the 13th, we're going to have the Sun Venus Cassini uh, in the sign of Leo. So the Sun is going to meet Venus retrograde in our first house. This is going to be a really beautiful time where we are going to be radiating Venus energy and radiating Sun energy. So just like God, goddess energy, just like radiating from us. We're also going to get a lot of realizations and a lot of clarity as to what this Venus retrograde is about for us. So we're going to be feeling like we're kind of going through a rebirth. And I really love this because just a few days after that, we are going to have the new moon in the sign of Leo right on the 16th. And so this is really, um, awesome to me because this shows me that like literally right after we have that sun venus conjunction this like rebirth where it's like we feel revitalized we feel maybe back in alignment with our values or back in alignment with our wants our desires and maybe our self-love you know then we have this new beginning and leo right then we have the new moon and it's like okay, like now we have this new beginning with self um, to move forward with. It's like we've recreated ourselves or we've gotten back to ourselves. We've let go of things that no longer serve us or align with us and who we are. And it's like we're just now creating a new new self in a way, like a new identity in a way. We're getting back to who we really are in some way, right? And so I really love this. And then on from like the 
14th to the 17th, Mars is going to begin to trine Uranus. Um, so Mars and Virgo is going to trine Uranus. So then we're going to get a lot of inspiration and a lot of innovative ideas coming in about our finances and career. Again, we're going to be taking a lot of like really uh, innovative actions and, and, you know, really taking action on the different ideas that we have financially <clears throat> and doing different things to organize them and bring them together and structure them uh, to bring in more, uh, just more fun, more excitement, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, rebellion within our career, right? We're going to be bringing in a lot more inspiration. We're going to be feeling very inspired with a lot of innovative ideas and being able to take action on those ideas. Um, we're just going to be feeling very excited and just this positive momentum forward. So then from the 20th to the 24th, Venus retrograde is going to square Jupiter and Taurus. And so Jupiter squares are not bad. They're actually really positive. So this tells me that we're definitely going to be feeling a lot more aligned within ourselves, like I said already, and that this is going to be expanded and we're going to be able to really promote that and see the potential of that within our long-term goals and career and maybe broadcast that, right? It's like we're broadcasting that to the world. It's like, this is who I am. This is who I be now. <laughs> Come get some, right? Like we're going to be uh, feeling very like vivacious and alive and dramatic and, you know, just lively, right? And like expressing that to the world or whoever, right? Like just showing that to the world in some way. And so I really, really like this. We're going to be seeing our potential in our long-term goals, in our career, in the world, seeing more of our place in the world, and I just seeing what makes us special. And I just really, really love this. Um, we could also be, you know, making new commitments towards our future, things like that. So anyways, on the, from like the 20th to uh, the 23rd, we're also going to have Mars um, in Virgo opposite Neptune and Pisces. So this is where it gets a little bit weird. <laughs> uh, towards the end of the month, it gets a little bit weird. Um, you know, Virgo season starts around this time too. So there will be a massive focus that really starts happening towards finances, like even more. There's like a lot of focus on finances this month, but towards the end of the month, especially like finances are going to be the name of the game here. Finances and resources and your long-term goals and, and future regarding those things, right? So we have Mars and Virgo opposing Neptune and Pisces. Um, so this is an aspect that can really bring about a lot of different things. Mars and Virgo wants to be in control and there's this pressure to get organized, to focus on the details, to be perfectionistic, to make sure things are working and going the right way and um, at their most efficient, you know, place. And Neptune and Virgo doesn't give a shit about any of that. Neptune, or not Neptune and Virgo, Neptune and Pisces doesn't give a shit. It's like, we have all the time in the world. Everything is one. So why does it matter? You know, like, let's just you know, uh, just float off into the nethers and trip on LSD, you know, like it, they're two very different energies. Okay. So basically we could be getting a little frustrated because we're trying to control something or we're trying to get something up to our expectations. And it's feeling like maybe other people or something going on around us is forcing us to really trust. Um, and so there's kind of this dynamic between, uh, pressure and conflict versus just trusting and surrendering and something bigger than ourselves, right? Um, you know, this, this urge to get organized and take action and do something about these things versus like, oh, we have all the time in the world, you know, like why, <laughs> you know? So, and this could be really happening in our financial space or with other people that we have financial, uh, you know, we have financial ties with, right? Like if we're with a partner, their finances or how we are combining, you know, our finances, um, investments that we have, debt that we have, money that's owed to you, money that you owe to other people. It definitely is kind of like a moment where we are being kind of pushed to find the balance between what we can control and what we can't control. And we may be forced to kind of surrender, um, right? Or from like the 20th to the 23rd, you know, we're gonna have this, these moments that don't make sense or that are feeling confusing or that are feeling foggy, we may not feel like we have the energy to keep pushing or doing things or going. 
um, and it can feel like things are just not working out um, or that others are being very confusing and evasive and avoidant and not really caring about things that need to get done financially. And so especially like a partner or a business partner or someone that you're working with financially, you know, so just be aware of that. And then on the 23rd, we have Mercury going retrograde in its home sign of Virgo. So this is going to be a very Mercury retrograde, Mercury retrograde, <laughs> basically. And it's in our second house. So we're going to be rethinking a lot and reflecting on a lot in terms of our finances and resources, our streams of income, um, how we want to organize things, how we can do less for more, how we can make things work efficiently. Virgo is all about how to work smarter and not harder, right? It's taking what you have, your priorities, what you have to offer, um, what you have to give and figuring out more efficient ways to use that energy and how to cut off other ways that aren't working, right? And so this is what's going to be the huge focus towards the end of the month in this Mercury retrograde for Leo Risings. We're going to be getting very, very organized in terms of our finances, maybe going back and paying things off, maybe returning some things, maybe letting some things go, going through our possessions or our resources or whatever and weeding things out, getting rid of things, getting organized and clean. Um, you know, this could definitely be a time for like fall cleaning, you know, um, and getting our shit together basically when it comes to our stuff and what we have, what we possess, what we own, right? Whether that is, you know, within us or external to us, right? So that's what this uh, Mercury retrograde is going to be about. Uh, a lot for Leo Risings. Uh, you could also be looking into, um, you know, things involving marketing, social groups, um, working with other people, collaborations, and things like that, as Mercury also rules your 11th house of Gemini. So just be on the lookout for that. So then on the 27th, we will have Mars entering the sign of Libra, our third house. And this is where we are really going to start seeing, um, you know, what needs to be done in terms of our day-to-day -day life, our environment. We could start feeling very busy around this time. This would be a great time to like create content or learn a new skill or start learning something new. Um, maybe go on a short travel. Maybe some people are, are moving, you know, like um, maybe you're going on a short trip or uh, you are doing a lot more in your day-to-day -day life, in your day-to-day -day reality. That is where the focus is going to be. Maybe you start going to like, you know, events or different things going on around you. You're exploring your surroundings a little bit more. Um, you are maybe, you know, learning something new, hanging out with the people close to you, your close friends, your close relationships, maybe siblings, relatives, neighbors, um, you know, things like that towards the end of the month. And also, you know, maybe kind of starting to see where you need to make peace, compromise, or come together uh, with some of your environments or some of the people around you, or where you may need, need to cut off you know, certain people, places and things around you, environments, influences, etc., that are not working for you um, anymore. So anyways, Leo rising, that is your August uh, 2023 horoscope. Venus retrograde will end the beginning of September, but then Mercury will be retrograde still. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, so we have this whole month of Venus retrograde and uh, then Mercury retrograding on the 23rd. So hopefully this helped you. Let me know down below. This was a long ass freaking horoscope. So <laughs> wanted to give you as much as I could because this month is a hell of a month. So let me know if this was helpful. Come back, watch this throughout the month, okay? Um, seriously, like do what you need to do with this, okay? I wanted to give you as much value as possible. So don't feel, don't feel like you can't come back and watch it like 20 more fucking times because you'll probably need it. You'll probably need to, and it'll be okay. We will get through this, okay? It's not that bad. We just have to love ourselves, okay? We just have to love ourselves. We have to honor ourselves. We have to find out who we are again. We have to reflect on who we really fucking are, okay? That's really it. So I love you guys. I'm wishing you tons of success in your career and finances this month with all of the good vibes going on there. Let me know how that's going. Make sure to comment the word badass down below if you stayed all the way through. I appreciate you and let me know what your rising is, that you're Leo rising, and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Virgo Risings, welcome to your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So August is a cray cray month, like I said in the intro. So just 
kick back and relax and buckle up, boo, because there's a lot going on this month. So basically for you as a Virgo rising, August is going to be a lot about coming back to yourself, okay? This is going to be a time where you need to kind of make rest, relaxation, and getting out of your normal day-to-day -day priorities and routines a priority, okay? Like the priority needs to be really uncovering who you are deep down, what you want deep down, your desires, parts of yourself or aspects of yourself that are subconscious or that haven't been being utilized, right? It's like parts of yourself that you ignore or avoid or don't want to claim, right? But they're in you. And so this month is a lot about really coming back to like valuing some of these like hidden, repressed parts of yourself. And it's gonna really take you out of your day-to-day -day normal routine and your day-to-day -day normal life, okay? So this is a time where, you know, it'd be a great time to go on vacation, although I wouldn't, you know, just be careful with that with Venus retrograde, there may be some hangups or something. Um, go to a spa, like go on a healing venture, you know, like go rediscover who you are underneath everything else. Rediscover your, your hidden talents, your hidden superpower, like your hidden potential your hidden confidence, right? Uh, where you suppress your shine, you know? And so there could be a lot going on though this month with this being your 12th house season, Virgo, that kind of just takes you away from your normal routine in some way, like I said. And so you could be noticing that a lot, but there is a lot of really positive and beautiful things happening in terms of you and uh, your own health, your own wellness, your own kind of vitality. Um, and your belief systems, maybe even travel pursuits, uh, educational pursuits, spiritual pursuits. Um, there's a lot of development and things happening there. So you could be getting really into self-development um, at a time like this. It'd be really good right now for this, but it's just really rediscovering your worth and, you know, the things that you've repressed while also uh, getting shit done, you know, getting shit done for yourself, taking more action, um, focusing more on you and what you feel is your purpose in life, what you feel like gives you a higher sense of meaning and purpose in life, what you feel like gives you, you know, a sense of belief, right? Like this could also be your belief systems and getting really aligned with that again, you know? And so that is what a lot of this month is about, Virgo. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we start off the month with a full moon in your sixth house, which is really going to be about endings or closure happening in terms of your health, work, and day-to-day -day routines. And so this could definitely be a time or maybe a job that you are working in or there is some kind of uh, ending in terms of a job that you have. Um, or maybe, you know, you, uh, you know, get a new job and you're leaving a job, um, you know, something like this or where you are really kind of closing out something to do with a routine or your health in some way. There could be some kind of revelation that comes or some peak moment that kind of happens with your health work and day to day routines. So um, from like the first to the second as well, we also were going to have Mercury in your sign um, opposing Saturn and Pisces. And this can be a really frustrating transit because you can really be wanting to have certain control over certain details, certain things that need to be done, certain things that you wanna do, your own behaviors, could really be trying to control certain things. And there could be somebody outside of you or a relationship that you're dealing with that really just doesn't care or is very carefree or it's like you're you're hitting up against a wall or you're not really you know you're you're feeling delayed or set back in some way or you're you're facing resistance with another person in some way and so it's like you want more details or you want to try to you know control or organize something but it's like not working out right or you're feeling some frustration or resistance there so then right around the third and and the days leading up to it we're gonna have Mars in your sign trining Jupiter in your ninth house. So this is really beautiful for getting things done, especially to do with like, you know, it's like you're doing things out of a higher purpose, a higher meaning, a higher belief in something. Um, this could also be, again, an educational pursuit or you exploring uh, new belief systems, new philosophies, travel. It's like you're getting things done and you have this kind of higher belief in whatever it is that you're doing or this high, higher moral like moralistic view and whatever you're doing and it just feels right and it feels like whatever you're doing is is on the right path in some way right around this time so then uh from like the 7th to the 10th venus retrograde is going to begin to square uranus again from your 12th house to your 9th house and so this could definitely bring in a, an element of 
surprise or uncertainty um, when it comes to something going on behind the scenes, maybe a relationship that you're involved in, maybe, uh, you know, repressed aspects of yourself. You know, it's like something is kind of, there's some kind of curveball, you know, or certain repressed values that you have um, that are kind of being called into question. Uh, morally or with your beliefs in some way or with distance or travel or you know your purpose in some way and so um, I would also say to be very careful with this Venus retrograde in Leo and your 12th to avoid um, a lot of drama and be careful of the people that you're surrounding yourself with because they may not be who you think they are or they may not be your friends especially if they showed up you know within the last few months but it may not be like that for everybody it could even be people that have been around longer than that or be people from the past you know it's like be careful messing with shady people you could find that not all of the people in your life um are friends or uh are in your life for the right reasons it's like you know the 12th house can deal with hidden enemies so that's why I say that, you know? Um, so just kind of be on the lookout for that. Do not get in any shady relationship situations at this time. I highly, highly, highly advise against it uh, with Venus retrograde and Leo. Um, yeah, just try to do whatever feels morally right to you. Um, that's, gonna, that's gonna be the best thing. Um, not that all of you are doing anything like that, but some of you could be. So it's just a message to some of you that may find yourselves in situations where you're in like a relationship where it needs to be hidden or it's like back door or it's a shady relationship situation, you know, or shady friendship, you know, so just just be careful with that. Uh, on right around the 13th, the sun, um, we're going to have a Venus Kazemi. So the sun and Venus retrograde are going to conjunct in the sign of Leo. And this is going to bring a lot of clarity um, to a lot of these hidden things going on within your life. A lot of the hidden subconscious behaviors uh, or traits or parts of yourself, you know, old habits, uh, old addictions, potentially old self-sabotaging cycles. You know, um, it's just really showing you where you may be tempted to kind of get into cycles that unravel yourself, right? And so for some of you, um, for others of you, again, it could just be that you are rediscovering repressed parts of yourself and things like that. So just um, be on the lookout right around the 13th because there's going to be an awareness that comes in that can really help you in healing whatever you're going through or moving forward and giving you some clarity. Because then right after that on the 16th, we're going to have the Leo new moon in your 12th house. So there's going to be some kind of fresh new beginning that's coming in here in your 12th house area. And like, you know, a fresh start of like new cycles, new patterns, you know, getting rid of the old to make way for the new, basically. So then right around like the 14th to the 17th, we're going to have Mars um, in the sign of Virgo uh, trining Uranus in the sign of Taurus. And so this is going to be um, really great. This is going to be, again, like you are taking action with a conviction, like you are gaining momentum, you are feeling enthusiastic, excited about something that you're doing. It's like you're on some kind of pursuit and there's a lot of innovation and excitement and it's like you really believe in what you're doing and uh, you may want to do something randomly or take some kind of risk or take some kind of bold action that really um, you know, that maybe been like planning on, or maybe it's been like, you know, prepared, maybe prepared for it, but it's like you're, whatever you're doing, it's like you're taking a lot of action and there's like a lot of momentum and enthusiastic, uh, energy kind of backing you up with it. So then from like the 20th to the 24th Venus retrograde and Leo is going to square Jupiter in your ninth. This is also kind of you know, getting realigned with your morals and your values and seeing where you've kind of caved uh, with certain subconscious habits and patterns and, you know, old cycles or patterns or people or whatever, where you've kind of caved with those things and how to get kind of back into alignment with what you believe is best for you and what you believe is morally right for you. And, you know, the path that you want to go down, the purpose that you feel you have, educational pursuits, all of that. Uh, so this could be a really, really great great time for feeling those things so then also right around uh the 20th to the 24th we're gonna have mars in virgo opposite neptune and pisces in your seventh so this could be a very frustrating energy right around this time as well uh where you are feeling 
it's like you're, you're having a lot of realizations um, about the whole morality thing that I've been talking about. Um, you're having a lot of realizations about your belief systems and stuff, Virgo, and you are seeing where maybe you have been, where you may have to sacrifice some things or where you have been maybe fighting for something that has been an illusion or where, maybe where you've been under an illusion. Mars opposite Neptune is a difficult energy and with it being in your first house, it's like something that you've been doing or that you've identified with um, in some way has not is not paying off or is, has become very confusing, foggy, elusive, evasive, avoidant. Could be another person or a relationship again uh, because there's a lot of relationship energy happening here. And it's like, you know, maybe, you know, there's, it's like you are trying to get organized and understand something and analyze something and, you know, really do your best with something, but maybe the other person or the person that you're in a relationship with or just another person that you're in a close connection with in your life is being very avoidant or carefree or just like elusive, you know, it's like just they, it, it may come across like uh, just avoidant basically or like neglectful or like they don't care or like it doesn't even matter. So it, it's like you, you're running into a situation where you may start realizing that there are certain things that are futile and it's like no matter how much you want to control something or pick something apart or really understand something and organize something and you know get to the the point of something it's like there are certain things that are futile there are certain things you have to let go of there are certain things you have to uh surrender to or sacrifice even you know this this transit can really bring up a lot to do with sacrifice and so um yeah, and again, this kind of takes me back to Virgo rising. I just keep feeling there's so many different things pointing to this that there may be someone in your life, could be wrong, but there may be someone in your life that is not quite what they appear to be um, or something going on behind the scenes. And it could just be a friend, um, you know, I, I'm not sure. Uh, it could be a relationship, I don't know, but a business partner, a coworker even, um, but it's like you're really trying to help someone, but maybe you're going at it a little bit. Maybe they don't care as much as you do, right? Um, that could be the case as well. So, but for others of you, it could just be, you know, if, if this is not the case, if it's not someone that is, you know, shady or anything, just then you're in a long-term committed relationship, could just be that your partner is just very carefree this month and it's driving you nuts because there's shit to do. Um, it could be that as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, anyway, so on top of that, uh, on the 23rd, we're going to have Mercury, your ruling planet, going retrograde, which is a big deal since it is your chart ruler as a Virgo rising. It's going retrograde in your first house. And so after all of this, it seems like you are really rethinking and rearranging yourself, your behaviors, who you believe yourself to be, how you think about yourself. Um, and again, self-improvement would be a really great great theme i think that keeps the, that may keep coming up on and all throughout august and maybe into september too um so yeah right towards the end of august on the 23rd when mercury goes retrograde in your first you're going to be really kind of just rethinking yourself rethinking who you are what you think you know what's important to you what your priorities are um you know maybe getting back in touch with yourself your health your body your vitality what's good for you right and, uh, you know, the sun will be in your sign by that time, too. So there's just going to be a massive focus that begins to happen on you. And then we're also going to have, you know, the sun opposing Saturn right around that time, which is also going to be, again, kind of like, you know, you kind of having, again, this kind of back and forth with another person or a relationship, you know, something like that, right? Um, it, it's like, there's something going on with another person where you're hitting against a wall around this time or feeling rejected or feeling it, like you're, you know, like something, like you're finally maybe even realizing like, okay, this, I'm just powerless over this or there's nothing I can do to, <clears throat> to really change this anymore, right? And so you just begin focusing on you. So then on the 27th, Mars is going to move into Libra, your second house where you're going to really start focusing on finances, money, shared finances and resources, and your financial relationships with other people, which also leads me back to the relationship thing. It just seems like you, you know, this could really be a time where you are reconsidering your financial pr priorities and who you share what with, who you give money to, um, and trying to sort that out, be fair, but also make peace with certain things and also 
not allow yourself to be influenced um, by others in any way financially. So, so th that's what I'm seeing for you, Virgo. Those are just some of the ways that all this could play out. Again, it may not be that way for all of you. It just keep kept kind of seeing the same theme um, for me, at least uh, reading this, reading your astrology. So let me know though if any of that was accurate for you um, or if you could see some of this happening i'd really love to know um but yeah so i love you virgo comment the word badass down below if you stayed through your whole horoscope up until this point and also make sure to let me know that you're a virgo rising and uh yeah uh come back to this throughout the month if you need to putting a lot into this one so definitely please do it would help me out and uh that's what i'm doing it for so i will see you guys in the next one virgo Bye. Alrighty, my beautiful Libra Risings, welcome to your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. Let's get into it, beautiful. So, my lovely Librans, this month for you is basically a lot about like a popularity contest. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It could kind of be though, but you are out. You want to be in the public eye with the sun traveling through Leo and Venus retrograding here, but you may be rethinking some things. You may be thinking your public image. You may be rethinking your friend groups, your social circles, your network, how you're going about networking, uh, you know, themes of marketing may be coming up as well. You know, just the different social interactions and networks and how they all connect. You know, those are really big things this month. You're really trying to find your place in the world, you're trying to find your inner authority in the world, trying to find your place of confidence, especially in social situations and social groups and with friends. Maybe you're wanting to go have fun with friends more, but this is a month where you're really reflecting on you know, your values in terms of friendships and your feeling of worth in terms of certain connections within your life and certain you know, different interactions that you're having with different people. And so you are really reflecting on these things with Venus retrograding, you're reflecting on your values and if the people around you are really sharing those values or aligning with those values or not, right? And also, you know, this is a time where because Venus is your chart ruler and she's retrograde, you know, this is bringing up a lot of stuff with you as well, who you are. And if the people you're aligning with or networking with or involved with, if the different friend groups you have, your social life, etc. Um, if they align with you and feel right to you and how those different areas of life are also interacting with you financially or business wise, right? So there is a lot going on. You could also be feeling this other whole different uh, pull to basically just uh, hide and isolate yourself and work on some things that are going on behind the scenes that could be really pulling you out of your normal day-to-day -day routines and work and it could be a little frustrating at times, you know? Um, so there could be things going on with your partner even, or uh, financially certain old habits, cycles, or addictions that you could be addressing in terms of your relationship or your finances, where you are no longer trying to like self-sabotage, but you are, you know, trying to focus on, you know, being more abundant and keeping the faith in the things that you're doing and work and uh, things like that, things paying off, but it could feel like you're kind of running up against walls where you keep getting caught in old cycles or patterns that are kind of delaying you or setting you back. So let me know down below if you're already feeling some of that, if that sounds like it's gonna ring true for you, but if not, let's get into it and I'll give you some other ways that this could play out. So right in the beginning of the month, Libra, we have uh, Mercury opposite Saturn the first few days of the month. And this is a really annoying, pesky little energy. Uh, because Mercury is going to be in Virgo and Saturn is going to be in Pisces. And so this has a lot to do with the polarity of trying to con subconsciously be in control of something and having certain expectations, having a plan, being organized and critical and, you know, efficient about something versus being very, um, being very evasive, being very, uh, elusive, you know, being very kind of carefree and, avoidant, you know, or not taking something as seriously, right? And so this is something you could be up against um, within yourself or within something with your job or your work. And it's really forcing you to find the middle ground between what you can control and what you can't control. Um, it's really pushing you to find that middle ground between, you know, focusing on what you can and then trusting the rest, right? And it can feel annoying. It can feel like you're running again up against delays or setbacks 
or there could even be some kind of news that comes in that you weren't expecting to do with work or to do with health habits or day-to-day -day routines. Um, so that could definitely be something that you see coming up in the first couple days of the month that could feel a little frustrating. And then right around those first few days of the month as well, we're also gonna have Mars in Virgo uh, trining Jupiter. So this is actually a more positive energy happening from your 12th to your eighth house. So it's like something that maybe you are realizing behind the scenes or through that other more frustrating transit of, Mar of Mercury Saturn. It's like you're learning how to release control or you know kind of limit your expectations and have more trust and you know you're learning how to get more organized with something behind the scenes or something subconsciously that's going on which is leading to um, a lot of potential or opportunity in terms of your finances or investments so this is really great um, so yeah, that could be happening. Or you could be uh, really trying to, really doing something to maybe help others, you know, with this being a 12th house, 12th, eighth house thing. Uh, you could be learning something new behind the scenes or discovering something behind the scenes that's really maybe going to help you financially in some way. So then right around the 7th to the 10th, Venus retrograde in Leo is going to square Uranus and Taurus in your eighth. So this really looks like, again, there could be some uncertainty uh, or some random curveball energy that comes in in terms of your social life, your friends, and your finances, investments, etc. So, you know, maybe there's a friend that ends up owing you money and not giving it back to you, you know, or maybe you uh, lend, lend someone something and they don't give it back or something like that but there could be something random here that kind of happens in terms of your social life your social groups your you know networking versus finances investments debt things that are owed to you or things that you owe to other people so you want to be careful with that especially right around you know the the seventh to the tenth or whatever you could find that there is some uncertainty that comes up there or something kind of random shocking like a curveball i wouldn't take any unnecessary risk um, financially on other people or uh, you know with other people there could be something that you're looking into marketing wise that ends up you know kind of bringing in this uncertainty curveball energy so just be on the lookout for that from the 7th to the 10th and I just want to take any unnecessary risk involving finances resources and other people so then on the 13th we're gonna have the Sun joining Venus creating a Venus Kazemi uh, in your 11th house of Leo. So this is a really beautiful energy because it's going to really illuminate to you a lot of what these Venus retrograde lessons are about and give you some awareness and clarity behind them. So if you've been going back and reviewing um, who you can trust, you know, some drama that's maybe been going on in your social life or with other people that you've been involved with, you know, this could give you a lot of clarity with that. Um, it could give you a lot of clarity with the people that you're aligned with, the values that you have, um, you know, that involve them, or if there's certain things financially you're involved with with other people. Um, yeah, but this is definitely going to give you a lot of clarity and awareness around that and uh, really probably give you uh, even some attention or notoriety or uh, appreciation or popularity around that time. So then on the 16th, we're then going to have the Leo new moon a couple days after that, which really is beautiful because this indicates a new beginning happening right after this like new awareness and, you know, new event comes where you're really being seen in the public eye or in your social life for some reason. And then we have this new moon just creating this like, you know, really great new beginning here uh, that's coming in and, and really kind of, you know, creating a... a a new start, a fresh chapter in you know, the area of life of your friends, social life, etc. So then from like the 14th to the 17th, Mars and Virgo is going to begin to trine Uranus in Taurus. Again, from your 12th um, house to your eighth house. So this definitely could be a time where you're getting a lot of innovative ideas and you're taking a lot of innovative action, maybe behind the scenes, again, maybe working on a project or something that's really kind of taking you out of your normal day-to-day -day life and routines, or maybe you are finally getting kind of the, the motivation and the momentum and you're being enthusiastic. <laughs> I can't think of how to say the right word right now. Like my brain just shut off, but um, you're being enthusiastic about the actions that you're taking uh, to, you know, developing something or to maybe breaking a habit or breaking a cycle or putting a close to something or ending something or finally 
cutting something out or getting rid of something and it's going to also help you financially um, or it could be helping you in terms of you know, taboo or occult related topics as well with the eighth house. But it's really like a lot of endings or a lot of purging, a lot of cutting things out with the 12th and eighth house, honestly, like that's where they both share similarity. There is like, you know, massive change that's happening with you um, that's allowing you to rid certain things of your life. This could be like a detox or a diet, like a, a crazy diet that you're going on that's helping you like purge or something. Um, anyways, so then after that, we're going to have, uh, I lost my place here. Okay, from the 20th to the 24th, Venus retrograde in Leo is going to square Jupiter. Um, so Venus retrograde uh, in Leo squaring Jupiter is actually quite, you know, um, it's actually quite positive. And so this is a time where, um, again, you're gonna be feeling more of the opportunity and potential between other people and working with other people or involving other people in some way with some kind of investment opportunity or financial opportunity um, in some way, you know? So it's like you are, or business opportunity, you know? It's like you're seeing the potential there again. You probably started seeing it a couple months ago and maybe have been doing something about it, but now there's been this period of reflection on it as Venus has went retrograde. But by, from the 20th to 24th, it's like you're starting to realize that potential again and get back to that potential and you're seeing how to make it bigger, make it grander, and you know, you're feeling very lively and very positive about it. So then from the 20th to the 24th as well, uh, Mars in Virgo is going to oppose Neptune in Pisces. So this is a little bit of a damper, damper transit here. Um, you know, Mars and Virgo oppose Neptune in Pisces is not the most fun transit. Um, it may feel like you are, it's like, it's like the feeling of trying, like when you're dreaming and you're having a nightmare and you're trying to run, but all of a sudden it feels like you're ru running in quicksand or in water or like in slow motion, like your legs feel all heavy and you're like, you know, and like the people behind you are running normally, usually, obviously, but you're like, you know, so they always end up catching you. But that's basically what this feels like. It's like you're trying to get something done, but it's like you are in water, you know, like you're not able to move, you know? And so it's it, a lot of times this, this aspect can bring up a very futile situation. It can bring up sacrifice. It can bring up, you know, really needing to surrender and let go. You're going to be really, you know, subconsciously expecting something and trying to control something and trying to like get something done um, in terms of your work job or in terms of your habits, health and day-to-day -day routines. Um, but it's going to feel like, you know, it doesn't matter or like it's not going anywhere or it's not happening, you know, or it's out of your control or like you're helpless in some way, you know, and so that's going to happen right around that same time of the 20th to the 24th. So just watch out for that. It could feel like you're really trying to get organized or something um, and the people at your job or your job itself is just like, Huh, carefree, you know, and um, it, yeah, it could just feel like you're, like you're not able to get through like you're wanting to or expecting to, and it's going to be a lesson of trust. <laughs> it's going to be a lesson of faith and controlling what you can and letting go of what you can't. If you can just focus on that and keep that balance between like, okay, what can I control? Okay, what can I not control? I'm gonna just have faith with that and I'm gonna focus on what I can control and what I can do then that's how you can get through this in the best way. So um, then on the 23rd, Mercury will go retrograde uh, in your 12th house. So whatever it is that you're trying to get rid of or that you're working on behind the scenes or that you're trying to make big changes to, um, or even that maybe you're just feeling the energy of like wanting to pull back or wanting to, um, you know, kind of isolate or do your own thing for a little bit. Um, that is, you know, kind of get your shit together. Maybe there's been things that you've been avoiding that you've had to like finally start organizing and rearranging and getting together. Um, so whatever you're doing here or whatever you're being shown here, what have been being shown is going to come back around as Mercury goes retrograde and you're going to have a chance to redo a lot of these things, reassess a lot of these things and uh, really, you know, kind of close the door on some things, some old patterns, some old habits um, that, you know, maybe some old habits of escapism some old habits of avoidance, procrastination, you know, things like this that could really be coming up with this Mercury retrograde. Um, a lot of subconscious habits and patterns that are just really holding you back in your life and 
from the life that you wanna live, the things that you wanna do, the lifestyle that you have, the habits, addictions, et cetera, that you have that are holding you back, right? So then right on the 27th, we're gonna have Mars entering your sign Libra. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be a time where you could find yourself a little more frustrated and a little less graceful than usual. Uh, this is a time where you could find yourself, um, you know, a little more, not direct, but a little bit more passive aggressive, right? You could find yourself um, maybe needing to be direct, maybe needing to speak up a little bit more, maybe needing to assert yourself a little bit more, maybe needing to make peace with conflict sometimes, you know? Um, yeah, maybe needing to harmonize the idea of conflict or pressure or uh, being direct within your head, you know, and, and allowing yourself to take the actions that you wanna take for you and you know move forward in the way that you want to and uh yeah so mars moving into your sign is going to have you feeling a lot more busier than usual it's going to you know have you taking a lot more action uh doing a lot more this also could be a time that really brings up your health your fitness exercise things like that your body where you really start wanting to get more in shape um and you know focus on you know there's just a lot of health stuff i feel like that's coming up for you right now a lot of health habit cycle addiction stuff that could be coming up for you in August and especially at the end of August and into September. So anyways, Libra, but let me know down below if any of that feels like it's going to relate to you. Um, I would really, really love to hear your feedback and uh, comment the word badass down below if you watch this whole thing because you are a badass, my friend. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back and watch this throughout the month if you need to. Always feel free to do that. And I love you. I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, Scorpio darlings, my lovely Scorpio risings, let's get into your horoscope for the month of August 2023. Such a huge freaking month, especially for you Scorpio risings, because we have so much fixed energy going on and then a little bit of a mutable energy going on. But this is such a big deal, Scorpio. I really feel like, you know, this month for you is so much about reflecting on your long-term goals, your long-term vision, your future, and the future of your relationships, right? The future uh, that you see with a significant other, the potential there maybe, future with certain friendships potentially in your life, and also letting go of things from the past and making peace with the past, while also maybe thinking about rebranding yourself, thinking about your career, thinking about your your long-term purpose, your long-term options, what you wanna build and be known for in the world, how, what makes you special in terms of what you do, what makes you an authority in the world and you know, in what you do and getting back into like loving yourself and seeing your worth in terms of your career and in terms of your long-term goals, in terms of your relationships and uh, in terms of the potential that you see for you know the path that you're on right now and realigning with that and seeing you know what you want to commit to what your values are in terms of your career and if they really match you know if what you're doing for your career really matches your values if it really is something you like and love and want to commit to if the relationships that you're in are something that really align to your values and what you love and what you want to commit to you know where is your heart in terms of what you want to do your career the world your public image what are your desires here you know all of that so that is just such a huge 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 deal for you this month um this is a month where you are also focusing a lot on networking marketing you know um analyzing kind of maybe even data or <clears throat> you know, just some kind of analysis of your reach with people. So if you have your own business or you have your own brand, you know, you could be really looking at like your reach, you know, or you could just be meeting a lot of other people um, and doing a lot of networking to help with your career or with your long-term goals, or maybe you're just hanging out with like a lot of friends or in contact with some more of your social social life in some way. So that could also be really coming up too, but I feel like it's gonna be more profession related for you this month, professional and relationship related, because there's also a lot going on for you in terms of your love life, um, what you wanna create in the world, and if that is translating to the people that are seeing what you're creating, you know? It's like getting back to what you love and your joy um, and trusting in that and not getting too lost in the details or the translation of it to other people. So that's something else that I really see here coming up for you as a Scorpio rising. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me know so far though, if, uh, if that makes sense, if you know, you're feeling a lot of these things already, 
So we start off August with a full moon in your fourth house. So there's some kind of ending or some kind of revelation, some kind of peak moment or illumination happening in terms of your home, family, and personal life, your behind the scenes life. Like what's going on with your home, your family, you know, there's some kind of ending here. You're closing some kind of chapter here um, in preparation to start a new one, or there's like a revelation that you have here. Uh, it could also bring up themes of like your past, and uh, your ancestry, your just family in general, your living situation, the people you live with, you know, etc. So that's going to be how we're kind of starting the month. And, you know, there is kind of this closing a chapter there because there is such a focus that's building towards your career, your long term goals, and your professional life. And so it's like you are sweeping away or kind of, you know, closing this chapter in your personal and home life. Um, to balance out whatever is to compensate for and balance out whatever is whatever you're going after in your public life, in your professional life, in your, you know, within your future. And so it's like closing the door on something in the past that no longer relates to you or just is no longer aligned to you um, or, uh, you know, a family situation or a home situation in order to really pursue these long term, this long term vision that you have your, your full potential in the world. Right. So then from like the first few days of the month as well, we're also going to have Mercury in Virgo opposing Saturn and Pisces. And this is what I was talking about where it's like you're doing some kind of analyzing or you're trying to control um, certain situations. You're trying to get organized with certain situations involving networking, marketing, um, you know, your reach, the people in your life or customers, clients, um, an audience or, you know, certain social situations, certain social groups or your aspirations, you know, like your, your, your vision for what you're creating in the world and where that's going, who's receiving that, right? Like you're trying to organize that and get clear on that and get maybe, you know, data about that. But, um, there is kind of, maybe you're running up against delays or, uh, setbacks or you're feeling kind of, uh, stifled about it, right? There's kind of this polarity between kind of trusting and really tapping into your create your creativity and trusting that and not getting too swept away in like strategy and marketing and, you know, all the analytics and all of that, like focusing on what you love and what you can control and letting go of the rest, right? And so there is kind of this push and pull between that. Um, there also could be, you know, some energy coming up between like doing something fun with friends um, that maybe ends up not working out too great, you know, um, or that maybe ends up bringing in that polarity again of like, you know, wanting to just relax, but then maybe somebody taking something too seriously, you know, or something like that. So that could also be something that you kind of see coming up with this aspect the first few days. Now, also the first few days, we're going to have a more, uh, a kind of more beneficial aspect, especially for you, Scorpio, your ruling planet Mars in Virgo is going to trine Jupiter in Taurus in your seventh. And so you're going to have this really beautiful energy kind of flowing between your relationships, your clients, your significant other, marriage, etc., or close friends, business partners, etc., and you know your audience or your networking goals that you're working on, your marketing stuff that you're working working on, your social groups, the people that you know, you know, um, acquaintances. So there's kind of this really beautiful, harmonious energy kind of flowing there, where you're feeling a lot of potential. You're feeling uh, like there's maybe some doors or opportunities opening, like maybe a close relationship of yours. Um, know someone or meet someone that can be very beneficial to you guys or beneficial to your career, your professional life, or maybe they're helping in some way, you know, like something like that. It's really, uh, really kind of flowing there. So then from the 7th to the 10th, uh, Venus retrograde in Leo is going to square Uranus in your 7th. So from the 7th to the 10th, there could be the, those few days, there could be a little bit of friction or uncertainty happening in terms of what you want and value in your future and from your career, from your professional life, you know, what, whatever it is that you're doing, um, being seen, et cetera, whatever it is that you're trying to do in the world and, you know, in your professional and career related life, um, is somehow bringing in maybe some uncertainty within a relationship or within some of your relationships. Um, so it's like something that you want and desire here is going against maybe something they want or something they value. 
and it's causing a little bit of friction or uncertainty or there could even be some curveball energy where it's like you know maybe uh, the direction shifts in some way or changes in terms of a relationship or a long-term goal that you have within a relationship. Um, it's like maybe they want something different for the future or maybe they want to now take things in a different direction for your long-term goals. And so there is this kind of friction starting there where you can either kind of you know, rebel against it, or they could kind of rebel against it. Sorry, I keep feeling like I have a hair on my nose and it's driving me fucking nuts. But, um, so yeah, there's some kind of curveball, friction, shifty, uncertain energy there that's kind of coming in, um, where you're not really, there's something that's like not on the same page with what you, what you want and value and what maybe a partner or someone else in your life wants and values. So then right around the 13th, the sun is going to conjunct uh, Venus retrograde. So we're going to have a Venus Kazemi um, in Leo in your 10th house, which is going to finally give you some clarity, some awareness, maybe some good news, some recognition uh, in terms of your professional life and your career and your long-term goals. So you've been really reflecting here, maybe doing some rebranding, revisiting, rethinking, um, going back over like who you are and your values um, when it comes to your professional life and who you are in the world and what you want to be known for, what you want to be known as, like your legacy, what you want to leave behind behind and you know when Venus and the Sun meet there's gonna like a spotlight is gonna be shined on that and you're gonna really kind of see those things clearly for the first time through this and it's gonna really help you in moving forward and initiating this kind of rebirth phase within your career after that because right after that um, on the 16th, we have the new moon in Leo, which is only like three days later. And so then there's this like new chapter finally forming right after that, where it's like, okay, this is who I am now. This is, you know, who I really want to be. And this is the new chapter I really want to start in terms of my career, my professional life, my long-term goals, my legacy, um, my business, whatever it is, right? So then from the 15th to the 17th, Mars is going to trine Uranus from your 11th to your 7th. Again, really bringing in um, kind of this uh, really like innovative and helpful and useful energy in terms of your relationships and this whole networking, marketing, you know, social thing that you have going on, whatever it is you're working on there. Um, it's bringing in this really innovative, like inspiring and exciting uh, energy between, again, your relationships, maybe clients, um, people that you work one-on-one -on -one with and, you know, um, a partner, marriage partner, et cetera, and like friends, networking, marketing, et cetera. So that's really, that's really good. We like to see that. Okay. So then, um, on, I feel like this month is like just so much full of shit. I feel like it takes, it's taken me forever to go through these lists on each of these signs, but, um, so then from the 20th to the 24th, we're going to have Mars, your ruling planet opposite Neptune. Um, so this is going to be kind of one of the shittier transits of the month, to be quite honest with you. Mars opposite Neptune is not fun, right? Um, you are trying to work on something. You're trying to get your shit together with something. You're trying to get organized with something. You're taking all the actions and trying to perfect something but it all is just going up in smoke basically it's just going up in thin air you're dealing with like a lot of delusional elusive evasive energy um you know maybe you could also be dealing with some escapism or some procrastination or it could start feeling like you don't have control or you're helpless over something that you're doing um it's like you know a creative project that you're working on that you're trying to get out to the world or that you're trying to get out to people um, could be feeling a little bit like futile at this moment, or you could have a moment where you're like, is this really worth it? Um, you know, where you start feeling kind of helpless or you start feeling like it's kind of just hopeless, you know, and this again is just really asking you to trust, you know, it's like something, it could also be something that you're kind of running away from or that you're kind of avoiding, um, like work or focus on cert focusing on certain things that you're kind of avoiding, you know, it's like, again, you don't want to get too wrapped up in strategy and details and, you know, um, analysis and all of that, that you kind of lose that creative spark, right? And so you could find yourself kind of doing that or kind of feeling burnt out or a little exhausted um, towards that time frame. So just kind of be on the lookout with that. It may involve some surrender. It may involve some trust, some faith, um, you know, where you may be a little confused about how to move forward in a situation and that's okay. Then right around that same time period, again, the 20th to the 21st or 24th, 
Venus retrograde is going to square Jupiter uh, in your seventh from your 10th. So again, um, this deals with your career, long-term goals, professional life, and your close significant relationships, including like a partner or marriage or, you know, like romantic relationship. Um, so this could definitely, this is actually a more positive uh, square though. So this definitely could be you um, kind of re- like coming back to that like potential or that opportunity within this connection or relationship again feeling very inspired feeling very optimistic feeling like there's doors starting to open or you're starting to really see that that bigger picture again together um so that could be really beautiful around that time even though you may be struggling in terms of your creative pursuits and you know uh goals with your you know marketing networking social life stuff but Anyways, and then on the 23rd, we're going to have Mercury going retrograde uh, in Virgo in your 11th house. And so you're all the things that you've been doing in that networking, marketing, you know, social life space, you're going to be going back and reflecting on and rethinking and figuring out ways to make it more efficient and figuring out ways that work best for you and how to rearrange, reorganize and uh yeah, kind of tweak some things, you know, and go about them in a new and different way. And then on the 27th, Mars is going to retrograde, or not retrograde, sorry. <laughs> Thanks God, I cannot even, fuck, that would suck so bad if Mars was also about to retrograde, but no. Mars is going to move into Libra, that is what he's doing. Um, so Mars is gonna move into Libra on the 27th, and that is your 12th house sector, Scorpio. Um, so this could definitely be a time where you find that you are a little bit more, taken out of your normal routine, whatever that is at this time, um, and you begin to start focusing a lot more on yourself and uh, relationships, you know, kind of behind the scenes kind of things, um, maybe kind of squashing or cutting out or putting it into old behaviors or old patterns, old habits, um, and yeah, just kind of um, feeling a little bit more secluded, a little bit like, you know, you're still gonna be somewhat in the spotlight because then, you know, it'll be Virgo season, the sun will be moving through your 11th, so there'll be even more of this really big focus on networking, marketing, other people and social life and connecting with others and all of that. But um, with Mars in your 12th, you know, you're going to also be, kind of going behind the scenes or maybe um, isolating, spending some alone time a little bit more and maybe just working online, but, you know, doing things, you know, behind the scenes or, you know, focusing on relationships and more of like personal life matters that kind of take you out of your normal day-to-day -day routines and work in some way. It won't, maybe completely, not completely, but somewhat, right? So anyways, that is what I'm saying about you this month, Scorpio, for your month ahead. Comment the word badass down below if you made it this far and watched this whole horoscope. Let me know that you're a Scorpio rising. Let me know what you thought, if this resonated, or if you could see a lot of these things resonating or already happening or already building uh, for you. I'd love, love, love to hear your feedback. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching this video. I truly, truly appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, my lovely and wild Sagittarian risings. How are you? How the F are you? Let's get into this boo. Let's get into your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing lovely, wild, and just freaking, you know, trailblazing out there and just doing your fucking thing. But August is a month where you are really reflecting on the meaning and purpose of your life, okay? Could be really going through some deep philosophical questions related to your values in the world, related to your values in regards to your purpose, related to what you actually want out of life, your belief systems, your long-term vision for yourself, your philosophies, your educational pursuits, like, you know, if you are being, uh, like who you are being, like what inner sense of authority you have within your belief systems, within your educational pursuits, it could also bring up things related to your morals, your values, your codes in life, you know, your potential long-term and your authority in these areas as well. Now, it also could be really bringing up the topic for you about your work, your job, your day-to-day -day routines, and if you are following your morals and values there, if you're really getting what you want, what you desire, if you're fulfilled there in this area this month, and also bringing up your professional life and your career versus your home, family, and personal life, your future versus your past. These kinds of things are going to be a really, really big deal in this month ahead, so stay tuned. 
let's go ahead and get into it. And yeah, starting with the first few days of the month. We're gonna have a little bit of a frustrating couple days the first few days of the month because you could be getting some kind of news coming in or experiencing some kind of delays or frustrations or annoyances because you're really trying to get your shit together in terms of your career, in terms of your long-term goals, in terms of the things that you're building towards in your life, but you could be feeling kind of like pulled back from your family, your home life, your past, your personal life. There could be some resistance there or some annoyance there or some evasiveness there. It's like, you know, you're trying to move forward regarding your career, your professional life, your long-term goals, you know, your, your pursuits in the world, but it's like something going on in your home, your family, your private life is making you feel confused or stuck or pulling you back in some way those first few days of the month, or there could be, you know, some setbacks or delays in terms of what you're wanting to go after. And so this could really kind of be a time where you're trying to trust more. You know, this is kind of weighing out like what you have control over in terms of your future, your career, your professional life, your long-term goals versus what you don't have control over and finding the trust, the belief, the faith within that, right? Like focusing on what you can control long-term, and letting go of you know what you can't control and leaving that up to something kind of higher than yourself there's like a lot of test of faith this month you know and so that's happening the first few days but something else that's actually really beneficial that's also happening the first few days of august is mars in virgo is going to trine jupiter in taurus from your 10th to your 6th so your career your work the work that you're doing for your long-term goals and your career and your professional life and your public image reputation legacy etc is really paying off you're seeing the potential here you're seeing the opportunity here you're seeing the bigger vision here it's like you really really are doing really well in terms of work and career and feeling in a flow here um, but there may just be something going on within your home family personal life past kind of behind the scenes life uh, that is confusing you a little bit or feeling like, you know, like it's holding you back a little bit or keeping you stuck a little bit. So that's basically the, the first few days of the month. And then as we get to right around like the 7th to the 10th of August, we're going to have Venus retrograding, uh, Venus retrograde squaring Uranus in your sixth house from your ninth house. So your ninth and sixth house are going to be going through a square. So this could kind of be something that you're facing within your work routine, health, life, you know, within that sector of your life where you are in routines, you're working, the everyday work that you do, and maybe your health, diet, discipline, or day-to-day -day practices or routines are somehow, you know, needing a shift because of certain maybe morals, values, or beliefs that you're holding or educational pursuits. It's like there's something here that could bring up kind of a curveball um, and you're having to reassess your morals, your values in this area or your beliefs in this area, <clears throat> maybe even your long-term vision, purpose, or what brings you meaning in this area of life. And so there could be this desire to make some changes regarding newfound beliefs or, you know, remembering certain beliefs or certain morals that you have, certain values that you have that cause you to maybe want to make some changes, but there could be some uncertainty there or there could be some risk there that's kind of holding you back or keeping you, making you feel a little bit nervous about it. So um, also, I mean, this could also be like maybe some rules or some guidelines or something like that change in terms of your job or in terms of the work that you're doing. Um, and that could also bring in, you know, some uncertainty. So. Right around the 13th though, we have the sun coming into its conjunction with Venus in your ninth house again. And so this is gonna bring a lot of awareness and um, maybe even some news or some recognition um, or maybe even a new teacher guide or something like that into your life or just some awareness around your beliefs, your morals, your values, your purpose, your long-term vision for yourself and what brings you meaning purpose and belief in your life. So that could also be something that's really happening. Could also be really focused on like travel or travel pursuits or learning pursuits or something at this time as well. Then right around the 16th, a few days after, we have the Leo new moon in your ninth house as well, which is like a new chapter starting, a new beginning that you're feeling more confident in, that you're feeling just a lot more of yourself in, you know? It's like, this is me, this is what I believe, this is what I'm feeling good about, this is what feels like the right direction. It's like a new chapter, a breath of fresh air really starting here in terms of your long-term beliefs, your like your morals, and uh, what you really find meaning purpose, and purpose in. 
So then right around the 14th to the 17th, we're gonna have Mars and Virgo trining Uranus. So Mars and Virgo in your 10th house, you know, really wants to get shit together and organized regarding your career and professional life and long-term goals. It wants the to-do list. It wants to analyze like what's working, what's not. It wants to strategize. And you're really finding out how to work smarter and not harder, how to work more efficiently, right? So it's gonna be trining Uranus in your sixth house. And so this is gonna give you a lot of really innovative inspiration here. It's gonna give you a lot of enthusiasm. It's gonna give you a lot of excitement, you know? And um, yeah, there's just a lot of innovative ideas that you could be having and or you may be taking action on certain innovative ideas. So again, like your career and work life looks like it's really, really going very well this month. Um, for the most part. So then right around the 20th to like the 24th ish, we are going to have um, Mars opposite Neptune. And this is happening in your 10th and 4th house again. So this is you getting your shit together, getting organized, getting very analytical, working more efficiently, working smarter, not harder in your career and professional life and really getting things together and organized. But there seems to be some confusion, delusion, or elusiveness happening in your home life, in your family life, within your past, your private life. It's like there's something not all the way clear here. Um, maybe you have a family member or your family is kind of acting strange or odd about your pursuits or you're having maybe they're not in agreement or maybe you know you're wanting to take action on your goals and stuff but they're maybe being a little bit avoidant or something you know or you're feeling pulled to kind of your family and home life but you're also trying to to do what you can in your professional life <clears throat> as well and so there could be some procrastination some futility that comes up here some evasiveness some you know just feeling kind of confused or needing to sacrifice or surrender something that really comes up here right around the 20th to the 24th um, and then right around that time as well, we're gonna have Venus retrograde uh, squaring Jupiter. So Venus retrograde in your ninth house is gonna be squaring Jupiter in your sixth house. So this is actually a more positive aspect, giving you a lot of optimism, a lot of faith, and uh, a lot of opportunity between your beliefs, your morals, your values, in terms of your purpose, in terms of your educational pursuits, in terms of you know, finding the meaning of who you are and what you're doing in your life um, versus your work, day-to-day -day routines and health. And so there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of like just optimism coming in here where it's like you're seeing the bigger vision, you're seeing the bigger goal in terms of your work. Maybe you're going back to school or you're taking some course or you're involved in some kind of educational pursuit to really make your career and work life better or to um, do something else maybe. you know, Maybe you're reflecting on what you really wanna learn to be able to do what you really wanna do and you're trying to still get your career life together to do that, you know, so that could be it as well. So then right on the 23rd, Mercury is going to go retrograde <laughs> um, right in your 10th house of career. Again, like you're really gonna be reflecting on your long-term goals, on your career, your future, what you want out of life, your destiny, like your path in life, your legacy, your public image, your reputation. All of these things are really going to be coming up where you're going to be really kind of focused more on the details of these things and strategizing and analyzing and getting data and, you know, finding ways to work smarter and not harder and finding ways to to make this area of your life work more efficiently um, and more organized. That is in a smarter way, right? In a more efficient way. And so uh, that's what this Mercury retrograde is really, really going to be about for you. Uh, it could also be bringing in topics of relationships with other people involving your career or long-term goals or just your relationship in general and your long-term goals with your partner, things like that. And then on the 27th, um, Mars is going to enter Libra in your 11th house. And so at this time, you really are going to be focused on relationships and collaboration, especially to do with your goals, your career, your personal life, and where you're going long term. And so that's going to be a huge focus. You're going to be focused on, you know, meeting new people, meeting new acquaintances that can help you with this, um, networking, collaborating, uh, marketing, you know, things like this are going to be really huge for you. So let me know down below, Sagittarius, if you stayed until this point, comment the word bad ad down below also comment your rising sign so i know who you are that it's you of course let me know if this related as well down below and what you do see coming up and if you could see any of this happening for you i would really really love to hear your feedback helps me out as an astrologer know that i'm 
you know, on the right path or see other uh, examples of how this could play out. So I love you guys. Have a beautiful month ahead and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Capricorn rising. Welcome to your horoscope for August, 2023. So Capricorn, this month for you looks a lot of, like, like it looks a lot like it's about really doing what feels good to you, doing what feels abundant, doing what feels fulfilling, doing what really speaks to your creativity, doing what really speaks to your sense of beauty, to your sense of art, to your sense of fulfillment, to your sense of joy, happiness, peace right? Like to your sense of stability, simplicity, all of that, like just really tapping into your inner joy, your inner happiness and the things that, that you want to create and having trust in those things, like really having trust and faith in those things, having trust and faith in the long-term vision. And, and that's where you're going to find a lot of meaning and purpose this month. Now, this month is also a massive focus on like investments, finances, debt, shared resources, shared financial relationships and situations, you know, any kind of financial ties that you have with other people, whether that be actual people, your partner, your relationship, institutions, companies, banks, whatever, right? Those are also a really, really big focus this month as you are kind of rethinking a lot of these things, rethinking your values, rethinking what you want out of these things and what you want to do, like what is really authentic to you here and how you can really tap more back into like a place of authority and inner power and confidence in these financial situations that you're in, right? And so that's also a really, really big focus for you this month. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first few days of the month are a little bit tricky and a little bit annoying because we're going to have Mercury in Virgo in its ruling sign opposing uh, Saturn and Pisces. And this for you is in your third and ninth house, which isn't really too bad of a place to have it, right? You could get some news about a delay or a setback, or you could get some news about something that is you know, I don't know, like the, there's a polarity here between being organized and detailed and analytical and trying to control things versus just letting go, being carefree and trusting, right? And so there's some kind of polarity with that coming up in the first couple of days of the month. You could get, like I said, some news about a setback or something, especially involving like uh, something that you're trying to do, um, something about your environment, something about learning, something about educational pursuits, something about information in your day-to-day -day life, travel, things like that. I would say this is probably not the best time to travel right now. Uh, if you already are, then just know that there may be some setbacks or delays or confusion. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. But also right around the first few days of the month, we're also going to have Mars in Virgo training Jupiter. And this is a more positive energy. This is happening in your ninth and fifth house. So um, basically what you are really loving at the moment, the things that really bring you a lot of joy and a lot of fulfillment and like, you know, whatever it is that you're creating that feels really abundant and fulfilling is also really making you feel like you have a higher purpose. It's also just feeding this sense of meaning and purpose in your life it may also be involved in like a learning pursuit or educational pursuit. Maybe you're learning more about this thing or you want to learn more about this thing or you want to teach about this thing or publish something about this thing. Um, so that could also be happening in the first few days of the month as well. And then right around the 7th to the 10th, Venus retrograde in your 8th house is going to square Uranus uh, in your fifth house. And so this is going to be a little bit more of an uncertainty shake up energy where it's like focusing on what you want, what you love. And this creation mode is potentially um, bringing some uncertainty regarding finances, investments, debt, you know, things like this. Um, and so it's, there's some kind of back and forth. This is all, could also be children for some of you or dating, love or romance, where it's like, you know, there is some kind of uncertainty financially or with shared resources or with other people's money or money that's owed to you or money that you owe to other people. That's kind of coming up here and causing a little bit of havoc, um, turbulence or uncertainty right around the seventh to the 10th. So just kind of keep an eye out for that. Could also be kind of this moment of like, fuck it. Like I, want to do what I love and or 
I want to worry more about my finances, you know? So there could be some rebellious energy there, some tension there as well. So just keep an eye out on that. And then right on the 13th, we're actually going to have the sun and Venus coming into their conjunction, which is a really beautiful energy. That day is going to be full of like awareness and clarity of you really finally realizing a lot of these Venus retrograde lessons. Like you've been going back and really rethinking and reevaluating um, your finances, your investments, your business, debt, resources, financial ties, stocks, loans, you know, all of these different things, money that's owed to you or money that you owe or financial ties that you have to other people in some way or financial or resources, like finances or resources that you even share with other people. So this is a time where you've really been thinking that, rethinking that with the Venus retrograde. And so with this sun venus conjunction it's going to bring some kind of news or awareness or revelation or clarity around this where it's like you're finally like something's finally being seen you know something's finally being seen or validated and you're getting more clarity about what this venus retrograde is about and then right after that just a couple days after that on the 16th we have the new moon in leo in your eighth house bringing in a new chapter a new start a new beginning to your finances investments etc so it's like you know, you've been really focused on what you love, what you want to create and all of that. But maybe because of that, there's been some stress in terms of your investments, your finances, you know, like, um, or maybe you've had a child and that's brought in some stress, you know, creation can happen in a lot of different ways, you know, but maybe a child, it maybe just something that you're literally creating that you love, you know? Um, and yeah. And so it could have been bringing in some kind of stress or uncertainty in terms of you feeling a little bit insecure in terms of your financial situation and investments and business and things like that. And so you've been trying to figure out how to sort that all out uh, while still feeling like you're following your purpose or living up to a bigger meaning or going by your beliefs and things like that. So then right around the like 14th to the 17th, um, we're gonna have Mars in the sign of Virgo trining Uranus. Uh, in the sign of Taurus. Now, this is a more beneficial energy. Mars is in your ninth house of belief systems and morals and travel and educational pursuits. And Uranus is in your fifth house of love, enjoyment, pleasure, you know, creativity. And so this really could bring in a lot of really enthusiastic energy towards taking action on what you believe, what you want to create, um, you know, really going after the things that you desire, that you want, that are going to bring you fulfillment, joy, pleasure, beauty, creativity, even more, and doing something with that. Maybe taking that out into the world more, or publishing something, or like working towards publishing something, or, um, you know, teaching something or, or learning something new about it, you know, uh, going on some kind of venture to, uh, you know, find out more about this in some way. So then right around the 20th to the 24th, we're going to have Mars opposite Neptune um, in Virgo and Pisces. Now, this is also a tricky and more turbulent kind of annoying energy like Mars in Virgo wants to be organized you know, Neptune and Pisces is very evasive and avoidant and like all is one, you know, the details don't matter. And so there could be some of those polarities going on around this time, especially to do with information, travel, pursuits, um, events, you know, things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis or environments that you're going to, people that you're meeting, um, educational pursuits. So just be weary around that time. Um, there could be something that you're not quite seeing clearly. Uh, and also I would say, you know, this could also bring up like a energy of needing to let go, surrender, sacrifice, you know, something like that. Finding the balance between what you can control and whatever you can't leaving up to whatever you believe in, right? Just having trust, having faith, etc. So then right on the 23rd, Mercury is going to go retrograde in your ninth house. This is an interesting area for Mercury to go retrograde in. It's not really a bad area uh, for Mercury to go retrograde in, but you are going to be just rethinking your beliefs, rethinking your plans, rethinking your travel plans, rethinking your plans for, um, you know, going after the things that you want in life, the things that give you meaning and purpose in life, rethinking your beliefs, rethinking your educational pursuits, um, rethinking teaching or learning or publishing or whatever. This could be definitely a great time for analyzing something or reviewing something, you know, especially like if you were writing a book or something, this would be a great time for like reviewing the book before you publish it. 
um, and then publishing it after Mercury goes retrograde. That's what I would recommend if that's you. And then on the 27th, Mars is going to move into Libra, last but not least. This is your 10th house, so this is going to be a time where you're putting a lot of energy, action, and focus towards your 10th house of your professional life, your career, your long-term goals, your future, um, what you feel like is your destiny, you know, your brand, your public image. And also learning how to collaborate with other people, make peace with certain things in this area or other people in this area, make peace with maybe some of the competition that you may have felt like you had in this area. Um, but there's going to be, you know, with Mars moving into your 10th, you're definitely going to be feeling a lot more energy, focus, and action happening within your career and in your public life and long-term goals, you know? So that is what I am seeing for you as a Capricorn rising for August. Uh, if you stay this far, make sure to comment the word badass down below and let me know that you did. Also, make sure to comment your rising sign so I know who you are. And also, let me know if this related so far to you, if you could see a lot of these things happening or if you've already been seeing some of these things come up. I would really, really appreciate it. Feel free to come back and watch this throughout the month. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Aquarius, the mother effing risings in the his outs. <laughs> Let's get to your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. This is such a big freaking month for you, Aquarius. Like, as a fellow fixed sign, man, like, there's a lot going on, okay? There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I'm sure you can feel it. We need to talk about it. Don't worry, we are going to. But this is a month, August is a month where you are going to find that there are a lot of things coming back from the past, especially with relationships. There's a lot of old patterns, maybe people even coming back from the past. Um, there are a lot of potential uh, temptations, um, urges, you know, desires, you know, and it's really making you question potentially like who you are and what your values are and what your morals are, what your beliefs are, right, in your relationship and in terms of what you actually want and desire in terms of a partner, in terms of friendships, in terms of important significant relationships in your life, right? And so this is a month of really getting, getting to know the parts of you that you deny within yourself. You may be seeing them in other people, like maybe you're seeing other people and you're being attracted to certain people that are very confident and very lively or very vivacious or hold a lot of authority in some way. And this is your Leo descendant, if you're an Aquarius ascendant, really coming up and showing you and mirroring back to you what you also have within you, right? This could also be kind of like a lot of high school stuff, like who's popular, who's not, where you fit in, where you don't, where other people fit in, where they don't, you know, like things like this. And so there's a lot coming up in terms of comparison, validation, worthiness, you know, these kind of deep rooted things are coming up in terms of other people in your life right now. And if you're noticing a pattern, I would definitely, definitely, definitely be looking at that and be looking at what these things are mirroring back in you, because it can be very easy with these transits to get caught up in other people and what other people are doing and think that, oh, they're just traits that they have that I don't have, or this is just how they are, but I'm not, you know, and think that you're different in some way because you may label yourself differently or you may think differently of yourself, right? But these traits that you're seeing in other people, you relate to in some way. And that is what you need to start figuring out. Are these repressed traits within yourself? Are these, you know, things within yourself that you haven't yet uh, figured out or healed or looked at, right? Finding your value inside of relationships with other people and if other the other people in your life uh, actually consider your value, if they actually like your value, if they actually feel that you are valuable, right? So this is a lot about finding your own personal value inside relationships with others, finding what you, like what makes you worthy on your own um, and what makes you worthy inside of relationships because like no matter what like you're worthy right but if you don't think you are it doesn't matter how many other people think that you are right like you have to think it for yourself and then once you do once you realize your own worth and your own value and what makes you special right then you don't go looking for it in other ways that are unhealthy, right? And so this is a time to find your confidence inside of relationships with people, to find what makes you authentic, to find your own values, your own morals, your own integrity, your own pride, right? In relationships and not being afraid to flaunt that or like, you know, be yourself or 
be authentic and shine inside of your relationships, right? Like that's, that's really, really huge with this. Um, you know, this is also a month where you're going to be really, really focused on different financial topics, but not even just that, like also financial topics regarding other people in your life. So if you're sharing something with someone, if they're sharing something with you, money you owe to someone or money they owe to you, um, you know, if you're splitting something with a partner or someone else, you know, all of these different things, it's like you're finding your identity in a, in a relationship, but you're also figuring out um, what you give and take from others, giving and receiving, um, are going to be a huge, huge focus for you this month as well, Aquarius. And uh, along with some home and family stuff and private life stuff and past stuff um, could also be coming up along with your beliefs, right? Um, your beliefs, your morals, how you view the world, um, your political beliefs, your religious beliefs, uh, you know, your beliefs pertaining to even, you know, who you are and your identity. And so let's go ahead and get into it. So the first few days of the month, well, actually, let's start with the full moon. I'm going to do a separate video on the full moon, but we have the Aquarius full moon. It's in your first house. So this is a big deal, right? This is a time where you are kind of coming back to yourself, but you're also realizing some things about yourself. There's some things about yourself that are being illuminated at this full moon and some things about yourself or old parts of yourself, old versions of yourself that you may also be letting go of, especially in relation to other people and how you view yourself and how other people view you around this Aquarius full moon uh, since the sun's gonna be in Leo in your seventh. So that first day of the month is really, really huge. But then the next few days, we're gonna have Mercury opposing Saturn in your second and eighth house. This could definitely be some news um, about delays or setbacks financially or uh, something that's happening a little bit slower than you would like financially. Maybe you're trying to get organized financially or uh, you're trying to get organized in terms of your investments or business pursuits or um, you know, money that you owe or money that's owed to you in some way or maybe your partner is, uh, you know, but you know, maybe even someone else in your life is like freaking out financially, but you're like, oh, it's going to be okay. You know, like there's kind of this polarity between getting really organized and perfecting things versus being very carefree about them and being very kind of evasive or avoidant, you know, even about it. So something like that could come up the first few days of the month. And then we're also going to have those first few days of the month, Mars and Virgo trining Jupiter. And so this is going to be kind of a time of you potentially doing something financial in terms of your home and family life or past in some way. It's like maybe, you know, you're making an investment or you're taking action to inquire about a loan uh, for buying a house, or maybe there's a family or financial, family and financial related thing that kind of comes up here. But either way, um, there's some kind of potential. There's some kind of optimism here and faith here about doing something that's going to make you feel more abundant. And that also is going to involve, you know, inv like investing or financial ties or doing more with your finances and your wealth. So um, that's going to be right around those first few days of the month as well. So then uh, from like the 7th to the 10th, Venus retrograde in Leo is going to square Uranus. Um, and this is going to happen from your 7th and 4th house. So this is going to be a time where there could be some kind of uncertainty going on within your family, um, your personal life, etc. And it could be somehow affecting uh, your relationships. Or there could even be some kind of uncertainty happening because of your past. And it's somehow kind of affecting your relationships in some way or a relationship in some way. There could also be something with this, you know, um, like something random or unexpected or uh, like kind of like a curveball coming in with a relationship or uh, an, a love interest or a significant other at this time. Um, you know, maybe something that you're going through in terms of your personal life um, is leaving you feeling a little bit erratic and then you um, kind of maybe clash with someone in your life over it. Um, something like that. But yeah, that's going to be from the 7th to the 10th. Um, there could also be, so right around the 13th, we're going to have the Sun conjunct Venus in Leo. And so this is going to bring a lot of awareness, a lot of clarity, maybe even some news or something being seen in terms of your relationship life. So this is going to be really great because it's going to bring a lot of clarity and awareness to what this Venus retrograde is really trying to show you in your seventh house of relationships. So you're going to get a lot of clarity or awareness or realizations um, in terms of your relationship sector. So watch out for that right around the 13th 
Then a few days after that, on the 16th, we have a new moon in Leo in your relationship sector. So it's like right after you get kind of this good news or this clarity or this awareness in your relationships or something is seen, something is revealed. It's like then we have this new moon and it's like, okay, like new chapter, you know, here in your relationship department. So then right from like the 15th to the 17th, we're going to have Mars in Virgo uh, trining Uranus. And this is gonna be, again, another really beautiful energy that's kind of coming in, another helpful energy that's helping you take innovative action towards what you want in terms of home and family and personal life and uh, what you want financially. It's like helping you take some kind of financial action um, and maybe even sudden action, but that feels really liberating or that feels really freeing or that feels very exciting um, because of, you know, or for like home and family in some way or home and family purposes. It's like, you know, your home and family life is really getting along with your investment, financial, you know, <laughs> um, inheritance, you know, sector. It's like all of that's really vibing this month. So it's like you're, you're making, um, a lot of moves here that really are flowing together. Let me know how that is, how you're seeing that down below. I'd really love to know. So then um, from like the 20th to the 24th, we're gonna have Mars opposite Neptune. So this is one of the more difficult aspects towards the end of the month. Um, Mars opposite Neptune can bring a lot of surrender, sacrifice, futility, helplessness, hopelessness, and this is happening in your financial sectors. And so it could be that right around this time you start feeling like um, you're kind of, confused if certain things are paying off. You're kind of confused how certain things are going. You're kind of confused if the details are adding up or if it's all going to add up, um, if it's going to work, if it's not going to work, you know, things like that. You're, you may start feeling like, oh my gosh, have I been tricked? Am I under a delusion? This is not a good time to make big financial decisions. I will say that, um, especially around that time. You also may be feeling um, kind of this push and pull between you know, pressure versus faith. And it's like someone else or something else may be putting pressure on you financially, but it's important that you find, like you focus on if there's something that you can control, do that. If there's nothing, don't do it and just have faith, right? Whatever you can't control, have faith with, whatever you can control, do something about. That is the best way to get kind of through this and find the middle ground there. So then we also will have Venus retrograde um, in Leo squaring Jupiter. So this is going to be um, right around the 20th to the 24th as well, from your seventh house to your fourth house. This is a very positive aspect, seeing a lot of potential and um, optimism again between your relationship life and the relationships in your life, the friendships in your life, the romantic and significant relationships in your life, um, and your home, family, and personal life. And just feeling like there's maybe, you know, just feeling a lot of like optimism there again, and opportunity there again. So then on the 23rd, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Virgo, which is your eighth house of finances again, um, investments, you know, shared resources, shared finances, financial ties, money that's owed to you, money that you owe to other people. Mercury retrograding here, um, you know, on the 23rd, moving into September as well, is really going to be a reflection and reanalyzing of this area of your life. How can you make it better? How can you change some things, rearrange some things, um, make things more efficient in this area? and get things more organized in this area. So then on the 27th, Mars is going to move into Libra. Uh, again, your ninth house of belief systems, higher learning, educational pursuits, foreign travel, where you find meaning and purpose in your life. And so Mars and Libra is definitely going to be a time where your focus starts maybe going towards some of these things. You start wanting to learn new things, get out, get have new experiences, get out of your comfort zone more, uh, and maybe start changing or letting go of some of your uh, old beliefs or your old views on the world and life, your old perspectives, your old higher perspectives on things, your old philosophies, your old, old political beliefs or religious beliefs, you know, um, things like that. Or you may start wanting to uh, sign up for a course or teach or learn or something like that. So, so that is what I'm seeing for you this month as an Aquarius rising. Let me know down below Aquarius risings if you can feel like you're you can see a lot of these things happening. If some of it already resonates, I'd love, love, love to hear your feedback. Also comment the word badass down below. If you watch this whole thing along with your rising sign, let me know and let me know how you felt about it. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.
Bye. Alrighty, Pisces rising. Welcome to your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So Pisces, this month for you is a lot about finding your worth, your value, your confidence, the things that bring you joy and that make you you, finding your authenticity in terms of your work life and what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Are these things that light you up? Are these things that bring you joy? Are these things that really set your heart on fire and make your soul sing? You know, like what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis to keep up with you? And how are the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be your job, your work, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, are these things reflecting your values, your self-love, your relationship with yourself? And are you shining in these areas as much as you could be? Are you living up to your potential in these areas, you know? And are these things reflecting your skills, what you're capable of, what you love to do, like your creativity? Are you speaking up for yourself, um, your lifestyle, your habits, you know? Like how are these things playing into this, right? Now this month is also very much about your relationships, right? Your significant relationships, whether that be with a significant other, uh, a marriage partner, just close friendships, business partners, etc. Those are also things that are coming up this month for you. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first few days of the month, we are really going to have some tricky energy as we have Mercury in Virgo, your opposite sign, opposite Saturn in your sign those first few days. So this could definitely feel a little bit annoying. It could feel like other people are freaking out or wanting to control every detail or being very perfectionistic or analyzing too much or trying too hard to, you know, make something the way that they want it to be and very precise or they could be being very particular. And you could be <laughs> on the other end like, no, like, let's just trust or let's just you know be a little bit more carefree or a little bit more faithful in this or let's just let it go you know and that could be a little bit of an opposition those first few days of the month so i would just say it's important for you know you to also understand and make sure that you're not avoiding anything by doing this or that you're not bypassing anything by doing this right those first few days of the month now, also the first few days of the month, we're gonna have Mars trining Jupiter, which is a more positive energy happening from your seventh to your third. So it's like your relationships or a relationship that you have is really flowing with when it comes to uh, communication, lifestyle, your environment, your day-to-day -day, you know, stuff, your skills, what you're doing. I mean, some of it could be about this where it's like, um, if you can communicate or show your skills or um, do you know whatever it is that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and how that is like the environment that you're in and, and the things that you're doing your lifestyle if that's somehow relating to your relationships it's really flowing uh, these first few days of the month so then right around the 7th to the 10th Venus retrograde is going to begin squaring Uranus again and this is happening from your sixth house to your third house and so this could be a time where you are feeling a little bit thrown off in terms of your work, your lifestyle, your day-to-day -day routines, the skills that you need to do this. Um, it could be a time where maybe there's even some news or information that comes in that's kind of like a curveball or bring some turbulence or uncertainty into your life. There could be some kind of uncertainty happening, especially with your work, your day-to-day -day routines as you are and your health as you are really kind of rediscovering and reflecting on your values in these areas of your life and what you want and desire in these areas of your life and your relationships in these areas of your life as well, like your relationships with coworkers, your relationships with the people that you're around on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe even friendships for some of you and how they're also potentially affecting you financially and in your you know day-to-day -day life surroundings and environment so then right around the 16th we're gonna have a new moon uh, or I'm sorry right around the 13th we're gonna have the Venus Kazemi the Sun is gonna conjunct Venus and Leo so this is gonna bring a lot of clarity right around the 13th a lot of awareness maybe even some news maybe even some recognition or appreciation for your work life or in your work life or in your, your health or your day-to-day -day routines in some way. So this is gonna be really positive. And then right around the 16th, we're gonna have a new moon in Leo as well in your sixth. So it's like a new chapter starting here in terms of your work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. And you're starting to feel like you can finally move forward and like there's some kind of new beginning finally happening here. So then right around the 15th to the 17th, Mars is going to trine Uranus. And this is gonna happen from your seventh house to your third house. Again, 
making it very easy to collaborate, work with other people, learn new things with the relationships in your life, with the people in your life. Um, maybe you're going to certain events, you're doing certain things, you're starting to feel a little bit more optimistic with your views and your thoughts and your day-to-day -day surroundings and environments and your relationships or a significant relationship in your life. It's like action is being taken and you're starting to feel a little bit more positive about the direction that it's going in. Then right around the 20th to the 24th, we're gonna have a couple things happening. Mars is gonna oppose Neptune from your seventh to your first, which is going to be a little bit difficult because Mars in your seventh, again, is like maybe a partner, being a bit of a control freak or putting a lot of pressure around doing something a particular way, having a to-do list, being structured, rearranging something, having expectations, being very detailed or perfectionistic, and you are feeling a little bit avoidant or evasive or like maybe bypassing it and being like, no, like just trust or it's gonna work out or it's not that deep, it's not that serious, you know, like whatever. And so this could definitely be happening right around the 20th to the 24th. So watch for this. But the answer here is to find the middle ground, right? To not bypass certain things, to do what's in your control and focus on that and leave the rest up to, like leave whatever you can't control up to faith, up to trust, etc. So then right around that same time from the 20th to the 24th, like I said, we have another thing happening, which is Venus retrograde uh, squaring Jupiter. So Venus retrograde in your sixth house is squaring Jupiter in your third house, which is also bringing in a lot of optimism, a lot of ideas, a lot of opportunity, maybe new learning pursuits. It's like maybe you're learning a new skill, you're doing something new, you're you know maybe learning something new in terms of your work, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, that's bringing in a lot of positivity, a lot of growth, a lot of expansion, making you feel like you're on the right track in terms of your, your work, your health, and your day-to-day -day routines. So then right on the 23rd, Mercury is going to go retrograde in your opposite sign of Virgo in your seventh house. So this is a really big deal, Pisces, because you are going to be really reflecting on your relationships. <laughs> your partner may even feel this a little bit more than you do. It may feel like they are deep in Mercury retrograde the next few weeks. It may feel like, you know, um, they're dealing with a lot of setbacks, a lot of delays, questioning a lot of things. Um, you know, all of the little details are being missed or not working out, or they're having to come back to so many different things, or you're having to have diff like conversations you've already had before or discuss things you've already discussed or dealing with details you thought you already put to rest, you know? Um, and so this is a time where either you are gonna be reflecting on your relationships or your partner is going to be reflecting on something going on in their lives, right? And so, yeah, this is a time where there's just going to be a lot of backtracking, reflecting, reanalyzing, rethinking, um, and getting kind of organized and clear within your relationship sector. So then last but not least on the 27th, Mars is going to move into Libra, your eighth house. So there's going to be um, a focus shift on your finances and your partner's finances, shared resources, shared finances, any kind of financial ties you have with other people, any kind of relationships, financial relationships you have in your life are really gonna be the focus. And there may be a lot of change happening here, a lot of action you're taking or that other people are taking that's really starting to come up as you focus on compromising, but also um, maybe politely like cutting certain uh, ties as well. So that is what I see for you for the month of August, Pisces. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening and also comment the word badass if you stayed for this full horoscope. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Make sure you also comment your rising sign so I know what rising sign you are and let me know if it relates. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. Alrighty, Aries rising, welcome back and let's go over your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So Aries, this month for you is a lot about coming back to your heart, your heart space, your passions, what you love, what you truly desire, what brings you a sense of joy, what brings you a sense of creativity, what you find fun and playful and reevaluating this area. Like where have you been in alignment with these things? Where have you been out of alignment with yourself, with like the things that really like make your heart feel good, like that set your heart on fire, that like make your soul feel alive, right? Like this is really reconnecting with that area. Could also notice a lot coming up in terms of love affairs, old love interests coming back around or new love interests coming up. But I will tell you that this is not the best time during a Venus retrograde to pursue anything new. And even if something old comes back up, it may not last because that's just the typical 
thing that we see with Venus retrograde. Now, I could be totally wrong, okay? Do you, do what you want. That's what this time is really about, like getting back to what you want, what you desire, what your heart is telling you. And so that's the most important thing. But it's also, you know, you also may find this month that you have some conflicts between your priorities, your finances, what matters to you most, what you value versus having fun and doing the things that you love and doing the things that make your heart feel good, you know, like, um, just being like tapping back into your inner child and, you know, being wild and, and, and doing things for entertainment purposes, right? Like this is a month where it could be a lot of entertainment that's happening. You know, you may be wanting to go out and do a lot of different things that are entertaining. Um, but how is that going in terms of, or how is that conflicting with your finances, your values, etc.? But I will say this, whatever it is that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis within your work, your habits, your routines, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis with your job is really, really paying off financially this month and really bringing in a lot of abundance and fulfillment financially. So that is the really positive part about this month. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first few days of the month, we have Mercury opposite Saturn. Um, and this is happening in your sixth house and your 12th house. So this is really starting to realize where you have some old habits of procrastinating, escapism, things that are kind of really holding you back from doing the kind of job that you want to do or, um, you know, doing the work that you want to do, doing the different things that you want to do on a day-to-day -day basis, getting things done, getting your shit together, getting organized, um, all of that with work and health and your day-to-day -day routines. It's like there's something kind of subconsciously or behind the scenes holding you back that may be feeling like you haven't healed. It's like you kind of maybe keep going back and forth on this polarity of like running in the walls because you procrastinate or you wanna escape or you have these self-sabotaging patterns or you just wanna get lost in something else and not focus. And so there's kind of this back and forth pattern between you know, having this pressure of really getting things done, focusing on the details, getting your shit together, getting organized, rearranging things, having the to-do list, checking things off, versus wanting to just maybe escape or avoid or neglect or ignore, et cetera. And so those are some things you could really, really notice in the first part of the month. Also those first few days of the month, we're gonna have Mars, your ruling planet in the sign of Virgo, trining Jupiter. Now this is a more positive transit. So it's like whatever it is that you are doing or taking action on, on a day-to-day -day basis, as even if it is like somewhat difficult, or even if you're having some trouble wrapping your mind around it, or even if there's some news of setbacks or delays, you are also like feeling very optimistic about it and it's also creating a lot of opportunity financially and resource wise so that's really good <laughs> so then from like the 8th to the 10th we're gonna have venus retrograde in leo swearing uranus and taurus and so this is what i was talking about where it's like where is the partying going too hard right like at what point are you you know it's like they're there's things that you want, but it could create some uncertainty or turbulence regarding your finances, right? Regarding your resources, regarding your security, your stability, your values. And so it's like, you know, there's something that you're trying to do or that you wanna do, but it's somehow going against something else. It's like feeling a little bit uncertain, it's feeling risky, it's feeling like a curveball, and it could end up backfiring on you if you're not careful. So just be careful right around the 8th to the 10th of the month when Venus squares Uranus. If you feel the urge to do something risky because it feels exciting and whatnot, just know that, you know, it is a very risky, turbulent time where anything could happen. It's a very unpredictable energy. And so, yeah. But anyways, right around the 13th, we're going to have the sun joining Venus um, in the sign of Leo. So this is going to bring you a lot of awareness, maybe some insight, some news, some illumination about what this Venus retrograde is about for you, basically. So it could be, you know, you finally kind of seeing, um, you know, certain things about this retrograde transit, about your inner child, about a uh, certain love interest or your dating life or about something you've been doing for fun or, you know, pleasure, play, romance, you know, something like that. Uh, children as well. Um, the structure grade also could be very much about children for you. But uh, yeah, right around the 13th, something's being illuminated um, or you could be getting recognition or attention for something around that time as well. So then on the 16th, we have the new moon in Leo a few days later. So this really is like a new chapter starting in your life. There's something new coming in here where it's like, okay, you're starting to get more and more aligned with <clears throat> who you are and you know how you express yourself and how you express your creativity and how you express your playful fun you know romantic side and how you find that joy and pleasure and uh liveliness in your life you know and how you're going after your desires and your wants and the things that really give you a lot of joy 
So then right around the 15th to the 17th, we're gonna have Mars trining Uranus. And this is a more positive transit happening again between your sixth and uh, second house. So you're going to have a lot of really good kind of momentum and innovative action happening between your work and your financial life. It's like whatever, again, whatever work that you're doing, whatever action that you're taking in your day-to-day -day work, in your day-to-day -day job is really paying out uh, financially, is really creating some kind of, you know, up-leveling with your finances in some way. So then right around the 20th to the 24th, we have two things happening. We're going to have Mars opposite Neptune. So Mars is in your sixth house, um, opposing Neptune in your 12th. Again, this could be a little bit of a time, again, of like procrastination, avoidance, feeling like doing anything is kind of futile. Um, it's like you're trying to walk through the ocean to do something, you know, or walk through quicksand to get something done. And um, it's like there's some subconscious stuff. Uh, maybe holding you back a little bit or there's some old patterns habits or behaviors addictions even or cycles or whatever holding you back a little bit you know and it's feeling like oh even if I were to do this it'd be hopeless or helpless or whatever and so this may be like letting go of something or cutting something off or sacrificing something even sometimes can come up with this transit um, but it's like if you haven't been taking care of yourself behind the scenes, it's really going to start showing in your day to day life, in your work, in your health, in your day to day routines. So then uh, we also will have Venus retrograde squaring Jupiter right around this time from your fifth to your second. So this is a little bit more positive where you are feeling optimistic creatively, especially in terms of what you can generate financially and resource wise with your creative endeavors or with the things that you're doing for fun, uh, with the things that you love or that are bringing a lot of desire and um, play and fun into your life. Um, so then on the 23rd, we have Mercury going retrograde in Virgo in your sixth. And again, this is about your work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. So Mercury retrograding here is going to have you really reanalyzing your work, your health, and your day-to-day -day routines. Like It's like this is where you start getting your shit together. This is where you start realizing what's not working. This is where you start realizing how to re-strategize this area of your life because there's been something kind of holding you back or slowing you down, you know, with all of these oppositions with Virgo and Pisces. So it's like, okay, how can I create a different schedule that works for me or how can I rearrange you know my routine or my schedule or my job or my health in a way that's going to work more efficiently where I'm going to have the energy right or, or where I'm going to be able to change some of these habits or let go of some of these habits that are preventing me from doing my best or giving it the most energy that I have right you could start feeling a little exhausted or burnt out towards the end of the month um, and Mercury retrograde though is really going to help you with that it's going to help you really kind of Okay, let's stop. Let's reflect. Let's figure out what the fuck's not working here. <laughs> let's go through and comb through it and, and comb through the details and make a list, make a planner, whatever to help us get back on track, right? So then on the 27th, Mars is going to move into Libra, your seventh house, baby. So your ruling planet is going to move into your opposite sign. So <laughs> this can be an interesting time where you start really realizing a lot about yourself and a lot about other people um, and your relationships. So there could be some, you know, a lot of changes starting to happen within your relationship. Um, if you're in a committed relationship, if you're not, or even if you are, it could also be just other people that are significant in your life. But there could just be a lot of change or focus there in the relationship where you could notice that your partner, if you are in a committed relationship, starts taking on more of that Mars energy where they're a little bit more assertive, combative, or maybe even passive aggressive uh, with it being in Libra. There could be some conflicts there that need to be resolved or harmonized or you know, some peacemaking that needs to happen um, that's gonna be more urgent you know, more of an urgent matter than usual. And so that is basically what we have happening for August Aries. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of this happening and also comment the word badass down below if you made it the whole way because you are a badass, my friend. And also comment that you are an Aries rising. So I know who you are. <laughs> and also, uh, like I said, let me know if this resonated, if you could see a lot of these things happening, if you're already seeing some of these things come up, I would really, really appreciate it and love to know. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Taurus Risings, welcome to your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. So this month in August for you is a lot about your home, family, and personal life. 
as we are in Leo season, which is your fourth house, Venus is retrograding here. So this is a time where you are reevaluating your home, reevaluating your family, reevaluating your past, your close connections and what's going on in your private life, in the relationships within your private life. And you could find that maybe in some of these situations, you haven't been being all the way authentically yourself, or you could find that other people are just worried about them and not about you or what you have going on. There could be some conflict between you and this area of your life in some way, whether it's you and family members or you and your living situation, or you're looking to change some things in this area of life. And you're really just reconsidering your commitments here. You're reconsidering what you want here in terms of your home and family. Maybe you're redecorating, remodeling, rehabbing a house, renovating something uh, in terms of your home. Um, but it could also just be really, you know, re like going back and like just looking at the relationships and the relationship dynamics with your family and what you really want and desire in terms of your home and private life and really finding that inner sense of authority again and maybe letting go of, um, you know, certain old goals or old ways that you thought that things were going to go that maybe just they just aren't you know so that could be some of it too um this month is also very much about getting back to what makes you happy and what makes you feel organized and what gives you a sense of joy um and you know focusing on the skills that you have that bring you a sense of fun joy play and childlike energy in your life the things that you desire right so that is what this month is so much about for you as a Taurus rising. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the first few days of the month, we're going to have Mercury opposing Saturn from your fifth house to your 11th house. And this is a big deal um, because it can feel like there are some hangups or delays or that, you know, some of the things that you could be working on if you're very crafty, if you've been really like, you know, getting back into the things that you love or crafting or creating something in some way, or if you have children or whatever, um, it could feel like you're running into some hangups or some rejection even at times with this. It's like you haven't quite found the right way to express this side of yourself to a bigger audience or to like in a bigger vision in some way. And so something like that could be happening around the first few days of the month. But we also have Mars trining Jupiter. So this is a more positive energy those first few days where Mars in your fifth house is trining Jupiter in your first. And so whatever it is that you're working on, you're feeling very optimistic about, you have a lot of belief in. So even if things are not getting like received in the way that you expected them to, it's like you still have a lot of belief, optimism, and faith in whatever it is that you're creating or working on or wanting to move towards creatively. Um, for some of you, this could be like love again or children, um, something like that. But either way, it's like some kind of creation of something new is happening. It could be something crafty, like I said, it could be something like a creative project, but it's like something that you really like kind of lose yourself in and like fixing or working on or rearranging in some way um, that you is a huge focus for you this month and even into next month. Um, so then right around the 8th to the 10th, Venus retrograde in Leo is going to square Uranus in your sign. So this could bring a, a little bit of uncertainty, like I was saying before, into your home and family life. It's like you're feeling a little bit uncertain, you're feeling a little bit up in the air, uh, and not really knowing what to do in terms of a home and family situation, or even a past situation, or just a personal life situation, like something that's going on in your personal life. Um, and it could feel like, I don't know what to do with this, or you could shock yourself with how you go about it or respond to it in some way, but it just, it may even feel like you're rebelling against it. It's like, no, this is not what I want, or this is not what I deserve, or this is just not going in the way that I wanted it to go in some way. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of like a, a like flip the switch energy, you know, curveball kind of energy coming in eight to the 10th there. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, it could feel like, you know, it's like challenging you or like pushing your buttons or making you feel uncertain or unsure of yourself in some way. And so you may react in a way that you weren't expecting to it, right? So then right on the 13th, the sun and Venus are going to come into their conjunction in your fourth house as well. And so this could be a time where you become very aware of what this Venus retrograde is bringing into your life. So really pay attention on the 13th um, because it's going to be kind of like that halfway point of Venus retrograde, almost like, you know, it's halfway through her retrograde and the sun's coming and meeting her and it's going to show you, you're going to see what some of these Venus retrograde lessons are going to be about. So whatever happens on the 13th, it's going to be very related to what this Venus retrograde has been trying to show you. Um, so pay attention on that day. And then right around the 16th, the new moon is happening in Leo. So it's like a new chapter starts 
finally like a new chapter starts a new role starts for some reason i want to say for you like within your family your home life and your private life and so then right from like the 15th to the 17th we're going to have mars and virgo uh trining uranus and so this is a really positive energy you're feeling very innovative um, in your action to really create and do the things that you love and you know maybe be artistic or craft something or build something or fix something or find a solution to something whatever it is that you're focused on that really has your heart at the moment and really has you know your interest at the moment um, especially around that time you're going to be feeling very excited about maybe even a little bit nervous but like it's like you're feeling very innovative like you're finding innovative solutions to whatever it is that you're you're putting in your uh, you're putting your effort into right around you know the 15th to the 17th so from the 20th to the 24th we have two things happening we're going to have mars opposing neptune first um from your fifth to your uh 11th house which again you could be kind of feeling like whatever it is that you're putting effort into whatever it is that you're working on right around that time it, you could start feeling this sense of uh, like this lack of faith in it or like I don't even know if this is working I don't even know if this is going anywhere maybe it's just futile maybe I should just give up right and sometimes this can call for a surrender but I think more than anything this is trying to show you just focus on what you can control you don't need to be perfect it doesn't need to be perfect and so if you fall into some kind of perfectionism shit then this is going to be a time where that's going to test you and show you how to let go of what you can't control and just keep some kind of faith in the long-term vision or in the bigger vision. And then also from the 20th to the 24th, we're gonna have Venus retrograde squaring Jupiter. So Venus retrograde in your fourth is gonna square Jupiter in your first. So this could be a lot more opportunity or a lot more optimism coming in within you and your home, family, and personal life finally. It's like you're finally getting a little bit more on board with that. Um, worst case scenario, it could be like an over-exaggeration in some way, but usually it's pretty positive. Even squares with Jupiter are pretty positive. So it's like you're you're feeling more optimistic and more idealistic about your home and family life for the most part, probably right around um, the 20th to the 24th. So then on the 23rd, we're going to have Mercury retrograding in your fifth house of Virgo. So whatever it is you've been working on and crafting, you're going to get a few weeks to go back and go over it, analyze it, make sure it's all good. So don't stress yourself out too much this month on whatever it is, because you will get a, a, a few week opportunity, a few week window to go back and check and make sure it's good and all of that. So don't stress yourself out too much about it. But um, yeah, so you're going to basically just be going over whatever it is you've been interested in, whatever it is that you've been working on, creating, um, crafting, whatever, redoing, and just uh, being able to go over it, reorganize it, find new ways to do it, um, see what's not working, weed out what's not working, all of that. So then on the 27th, uh, Mars in Libra uh, is going to move into Libra, your sixth house. And so a lot of your focus and energy is also going to start going towards your work, your day-to-day -day work, your day-to-day -day health, your day-to-day -day routines. You're going to be starting to put a lot of your focus and energy there, taking a lot of action there, doing a lot of different things there. So yeah, so that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus Rising, for the month of August. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening. Also, comment the word badass down below. If you watch this whole thing, feel free to come back and watch it throughout the month if you need to. Thank you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Gemini Risings, welcome to your August 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I am not going to lie, mama is fucking tired right now, okay? I've been doing this for basically all day, so uh, I am getting a little tired, so my energy is not all the way up where it was when I first started this, so please just excuse me. Try to take some breaks, but um, yeah, I'm just it's time tired it's fucking midnight <laughs> at this point so just bear with but i'm still gonna give you your horoscope okay so don't worry so gemini this is an interesting one for you i would say this month isn't as turbulent or dramatic for you as it is probably a lot of other people um just because of where a lot of these placements and transits are happening for you in your chart i would say you know venus is retrograding in leo which is your third house you're rethinking a lot of your ideas you're rethinking a lot of your environments and how they relate to you and if if they're aligned with who you are and how you express yourself and maybe your friend groups and the people that you hang around on a day-to-day -day basis, the people, places, and things that are a part of your life and your lifestyle on a day-to-day -day basis. You may be rethinking your skills, what you have to offer, what you have to work with, you know, um, maybe creating something new and reworking on that, you know, something, things like that could be coming up. Um, maybe like old people, old friends, old acquaintances could be coming back around or you could be revisiting old environments, you know, things like that could be coming up. But I feel like the main focus for you really this month as a Gemini rising is your Virgo fourth house. 
So it looks to me like you're probably gonna be really working on something to do with your home and family life. Maybe you're reorganizing, maybe you are remodeling, renovating, you know, doing some kind of project at home or perfecting your home in some way or making something better, or making certain things better in your home and family life. Maybe you're problem solving here or doing a lot of organizing or rearranging in some way in your home life. And I feel like that's gonna be the main focus for you because you're kind of being pulled this month between that and your career, long-term vision, long-term goals, what you see for your future, um, your reputation, you know, like your public image, your vision for your future and your long-term goals. And it could feel like, you know, a lot of minute, minuscule details in your day-to-day -day life or in your home life, in your private life are kind of pulling you out of that vision that you have for your future in some way or not adding up to what you wanted your future to be uh, or your long-term vision to be. And so there's kind of a lot of back and forth between like your future and your, your home life or your career and your home life or your long-term goals and your private life, you know, um, your public life and your, you know, private life, basically. Like there's kind of like a lot of push and pull there where you're going to be really pushed to find the middle ground and to basically focus on what you can control and what you can fix and let go of the rest. Whatever you cannot control or fix, you got to let go of. You got to just have faith and trust, right? You just have to. And so there's kind of this push and pull between being kind of carefree, maybe avoiding certain things, being evasive and bypassing certain things versus focusing on every little detail and fixing every little thing and making it perfect and being in control and all of that. And so there's this kind of push and pull between these two really extreme polarities and you have to kind of find that middle ground, you know? And so that's what I really feel like is, is going to be a lot of the main focus for you as a Gemini rising this month. So the first few days of the month, we have Mercury opposite Saturn, where this is really coming in at first, you know, your ruling planet Mercury is opposing Saturn. And so this could feel like delays, setbacks, like you're kind of running up against a wall or something's being slowed down or a process is being slowed down and something that you're focused on with your home and family or something that your family is focused on or a living situation or something like that. It's like something is being slowed down um, or it's like, you know, you have this, you're trying to analyze it and, you know, make it detailed and create, you know, like a structure for it or a list or get it together and, and make it organized in some way. But there's also this kind of like, you know, maybe there's this demand in your career where you can't focus on it as much, or maybe there's this pull to just like trust and let it go, you know? And so there's kind of this push and pull there the, those first few days of the month. And then also on those first few days of the month, we have a more positive transit happening as well, where Mars in your fourth house of home, family, and your private life is going to try and Jupiter in your 12th house of healing and getting away and self undoing and escapism, mental health, doing things behind the scenes, you know, getting rest, sleep, getting out of your day to day routine. So there is kind of like whatever is going on in your home life, maybe contributing to you getting out of your day to day routines or maybe contributing to you letting go of, you know, your normal routines or your normal work or your normal lifestyle in some way. Um, so there is kind of that happening, but it is kind of still positive. It may even be giving you some kind of healing or giving you some kind of, you know, something closure or something like that. But from like the 8th to the 10th, Venus retrograde and Leo is going to square Uranus and Taurus in your 12th. So there could be kind of something coming up here, like a random curveball of information that you weren't expecting. Um, or, you know, some kind of uncertainty happening in your day to day life or in your surroundings or in your environment or with like a friend or with like an event or something like that happening from the 8th to the 10th. So just kind of watch out for that. Be aware of that. And then on the 13th, the sun and Venus are going to come into their conjunction. So this is where you're going to kind of have a realization or be able to see and have awareness around what this Venus retrograde is really kind of bringing up for you. Um, is it bringing up kind of self-expression, being yourself, speaking your truth? Is it bringing up um, you know, certain relationships and situations with friends, relatives, neighbors, siblings? Is it bringing up certain creative ideas and creative skills and expressing yourself? You know, like things like this, you know, could be getting brought up around this time. So just pay attention on the 13th. There could be news as well that kind of comes in around that time. So just see what that's about on the 13th. And then a few days later on the 16th, we actually have the Leo new moon. So it's like right after that, there's like a new chapter kind of starting a new start, a new beginning, really starting in this area and showing you you know, you're going to feel a little bit more aligned in your values and in who you are in this area by that new moon. So then from the 15th to the 17th, Mars in Virgo is going to try and Uranus and Taurus again from your fourth and your 12th house. So it's like you're having these like innovative ideas and you're taking action on them or you're having these innovative 
uh, plans or behind the scenes kind of things happening and you're taking action on them. Um, you're feeling very excited because it's like just getting you out of you know, your normal life in some way or it's pulling you away from your normal life in some way and you're kind of just really focused and feeling like, okay, this is going to create um, a really big shift or maybe even a time of closure or healing in my life or break me free from something in some way, right around the 15th to the 17th. So then from the 20th to the 24th, we have two transits happening. We have Mars opposite Neptune. So Mars in the fourth house opposite Neptune in your 10th house, which could feel a little confusing. Um, it could feel like right around that time, like you've been doing so much work, you've been rearranging so much things, you've been working on so many different things, and like it almost just doesn't even matter. You know, it, it could feel like this transit can feel a little bit helpless, a little bit hopeless. It can bring in this sense of, you know, feeling futile. So just be aware of that and just know that even if that is how you're feeling, that doesn't make it the reality. Um, it could just be some situations are happening in the reality, in your physical reality that aren't matching up to your belief and trust of your long-term vision. And so really the way to deal with this is again, to let go of whatever you cannot control and leave that up to faith and trust, because that's all you can really fucking do anyway, unless you want to freak out about it, then be my guest, go ahead, but it's going to suck and it's going to be miserable and it probably is going to make it way worse anyway. <laughs> trust me. I know from experience. Um, but um, try to just release what you can't control, leave that up to whatever you believe in, whatever faith you have, whatever, trust, just fucking trust, and then just focus on what you can control, right? Like that is what, that is how to deal with this opposition, right? Um, so then we also have Venus retrograde squaring Jupiter, and this one's more positive from the 20, 20th to 24th again. Um, and this is going to be a little bit more optimistic and you know, if you can just kind of get your mindset right and be a little bit more playful and be a little bit more expressive, you know, you're going to get through this, right? And so then on the 23rd, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Virgo. So whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to be reflecting on anyway. So don't stress yourself out too hard and don't feel like this is like the final thing, you know, like because Mercury is going to retrograde on the 23rd and you're going to be reflecting on everything you've done to begin with and going back through it and combing through it and reorganizing it redoing some things maybe um i mean maybe not everything but you know just going back and analyzing it and getting structured there within your home family and personal life so then on the 27th we were going to have mars entering the sign of libra this is your fifth house of children romance dating love creation you know creative projects finding your joy, finding your happiness, finding your peace, finding your harmony, right? So Mars entering here is going to bring some focus here uh, to these topics at the end of the month. So let me know, Gemini, if this related with you at all, if you could see these things happening, uh, let me know down below. If you stayed this whole way, if you did, comment the word badass down below because you are a badass. Thank you so very much. Also comment your rising sign so I know what rising sign you are. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, last but not least, Cancer Mother Effing Rising. Hello, and welcome to your August 2023 horoscope. Okay, so I'm gonna let you know, my Leo Rising is almost out of power right now, okay? So my Aquarian Moon kicks on when that happens, and I become a little bit more robotic, okay? And less, like, alive, right? Because it's, like, past midnight at this point. I've been filming these, like, all day. I've tried to take several breaks to recharge, but it's just, I'm fucking tired at this point, okay? Like, I'm I'm starting to get over it a little bit, so just excuse me, and I apologize, okay? Um, but you were first last month, so you got all the energy last month, so I'm still gonna tell you your horoscope and do my best to, you know, make it somewhat entertaining, I guess, but like, yeah, I love you, sorry, but let's go ahead and fucking get into it. So, your, uh, this month, <laughs> basically, August for you, is a lot about your finances, your priorities, and really stepping back into your self-esteem regarding these things, stepping back into your inner authority regarding these things, stepping back into what you want regarding these things, where, like, what do you really want in terms of your money? What do you really want? What does your heart really desire in terms of money, in terms of your, your values, in terms of your priorities, in terms of your resources, in terms of where you're going financially, right? And so it's like, you could be really rethinking and reflecting on a lot of financial shit right now. Right? You could be really rethinking and reflecting on if you have the energy to give to certain financial pursuits, if you really want or desire certain financial pursuits and uh, financial relationships or relationships tied to resources uh, that are in your life. Like That could be a really huge focus this month right now for you as a Cancer Rising. 
Something else that's really coming in for you this month is a huge focus on your day-to-day surroundings, your day-to-day environment, and your day-to-day life, um, where you are reorganizing your day-to-day life for uh, really getting clear on what things you have to do. You could be very busy, running a lot of errands, doing a lot of things um, in your day-to-day life, You know, running into a lot of different people, places, and things with Mercury and Mars in your, or not in your sign, but in your third house <laughs> this month in the sign of Virgo. Okay, so the, those are kind of the two biggest focuses for this month. Um, there's also kind of a focus on social life, networking, um, you know, collaborating with other people, things like that, that we'll go over as well. But so let's start the first few days of the month. We have Mercury opposite Saturn, which is a little bit of a tricky and annoying transit, to be honest with you. Um, So Mercury in your third house um, is going to be opposing Saturn in your ninth. So this could be right around the first few days of the month, um, some delayed news or some news about something that is delayed or you know, some news about a learning pursuit or educational pursuit or travel pursuit or just any kind of news, any kind of informational shit basically um, could be a little bit delayed. There could be some kind of push and pull or polarity between it's like you're trying to plan something or you're trying to organize or you're trying to be precise and particular about something, but it's just kind of evasive. It's just kind of elusive. It's just kind of up in the air. It's like who fucking knows, you know? And it kind of pushes you to release some control and trust in those first few days of the month. So then also in those first few days of the month, we have a more positive transit happening, which is Mars and Virgo trining Jupiter in Taurus. So this could be really great, big, bold energy that you're feeling to make really big, bold moves in, you know, taking the next step in terms of you know, restructuring something in your life, expressing yourself or, um, you know, making decisions in terms of your network, in terms of people that you're networking with, people that you're me, you may be collaborating with, marketing, posting content, you know, things like that, like getting organized in some of these areas of like your communications and your marketing and networking in some way. And so that actually is really good, but you could also just be finding that like setback or delay, or maybe even you're just running up against like this, this state of unknowingness, you know, like not knowing for sure. And there's just this element of trust or, you know, maybe waiting that has to come in with that in the first few days. So then right around the 8th to the 10th, we're going to have Venus retrograde and Leo squaring Uranus again. So uh, Venus in your second house is going to square Uranus in your 11th house. So this could be some random curveball energy that kind of throws you off or throws this kind of like uncertainty wrench into a financial and collaborative decision that you're trying to make. So, or you could be trying to make a risky decision, but just know with Venus retrograde squaring Uranus, this may not turn out how you think it's going to turn out. So just keep that in mind. If you're trying to make some kind of financial decision or commitment in a collaboration with someone or something else or another organization or institution or whatever, some other person or, you know, some kind of network thing, you, it may not work out in the in the expected way. With a Venus retrograde, you may come to regret it. There may be things that come back around that you know you didn't plan for. Um, and that could even be happening now. Maybe there's a decision you made before this that comes back now and it's like, oh shit, now what? You know, and it adds this level of uncertainty from like the eighth to the tenth. So just be careful with that. Be careful with like your money, your priorities versus collaborating with others, friend groups, social groups networking, companies, institutions, you know, collaborations, things like that. So right around the 8th to the 10th. So right on the 13th, I mean, it very well could be that you're just taking a risk, you know, that could literally just be it. But I don't know, I, I personally wouldn't risk it if it were if it were me, I would try my hardest not to risk it if I if I if I could. But on the 13th, the sun is going to conjunct Venus and Leo. So this is where you're going to get an illumination an awakening and awareness of what the fuck is going on in your second house right now, basically. Like what Venus is doing retrograding in your second house right now. Like this is where you're going to like pay attention on the 13th because it's going to be like whatever's coming up or, uh, that day around the 13th, like it's going to be like, oh, like this is the lesson or this is what this is trying to show me. If you're paying attention, it's about paying attention. The sun is attention, consciousness, right? Shining a light on Venus retrograde, right? So just pay attention around the 13th. On the 16th, just a few days after that is the Leo new moon. So this tells me that like we have that realization and that awareness, that epiphany, right? And then we have the new moon in Leo, which is like, okay, new start, new beginning. I realize it now, I see it now, you know? And so, yeah. So then from the 15th to the 17th, 
Mars in Virgo is going to trine Uranus in Taurus. This is a positive transit, bringing in a lot of innovative, maybe even unexpected and exciting and, you know, just liberating action into like whatever we're working on on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. So it's like whatever projects you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, especially communication, content, social media, like anything communication-wise, um, anything short travel-wise, anything with your community, anything in your day-to-day -day life or in your environment or with your self-expression, it's really in collaboration with like another group or company or organization or other people in general or networking, marketing, etc. It's like really going good. It's like really like fuck yes, like we got this, we are fucking doing this, like we are rebelling against all odds, like fuck yes, right? Like it's that kind of energy. So anyway, and then right around the 20th to the 24th, um, we have Venus retrograding in Leo, squaring uh, Jupiter in Taurus. So this is also a more positive transit that can really bring a lot of optimism back in terms of finances and other people. Again, like collaborative efforts, right? So it's like, okay, like maybe there is this opportunity or maybe there is this another opportunity or maybe there is another path or another door or whatever, you know, with collaborating with others or with more companies or a different company or whatever, where we can get some things going financially, especially in terms of, you know, doing things for entertainment or doing things like that feel passionate to us, things like that. So uh, then right around the 20th to the 24th as well, um, we're going to have Mars opposing Neptune. So this is the more shitty transit at the end of the month around this time. So Mars in Virgo in the third is going to oppose Neptune uh, in the ninth. And so this, again, is just kind of this energy of like wanting to get organized and wanting to have a plan, wanting to have, you know, um, organization within a project or something that we're working on and feeling like it's just or like it's just it doesn't even matter it's like futile right and so there can come like with this can also often come like this feeling of hopelessness or helplessness and um yeah but if we just remember like this what this really is trying to show us is how to have faith how to let go and how to find the balance between focusing and you know working on something and being detailed and being efficient about something versus just letting the fuck go and trusting right it's like if you can find that balance there, you'll be fine. And all you have to do to find that balance is focus on what you can fucking control from the 20th to the 24th and release whatever the fuck you can't and trust that it'll get worked out. Like that's all you can really do. You know, you can stress about all the shit you can't control over, but it's going to go a lot worse. Okay. So I don't recommend it. So anyway, from the 23rd or on the 23rd, we have Mercury retrograding in the sign of Virgo. So don't take yourself too fucking seriously in these few weeks with whatever project that you're fucking working on communication related, content related, environment related, surrounding related, location related, you know, community related, whatever it is that you've been fucking working on with all the shit in your third house in Virgo, like you're going to come back to. Okay. So don't put too much pressure on yourself and just do whatever you are doing these next few weeks, but just know that like, you're going to have a chance to come back and relook at it again. You're going to have a chance to go over it and perfect it and make sure that it's working and that it's what you really want and that it's working efficiently and it's good and it's cool. Like you're going to have a chance to problem solve and all of that. So just don't take it too seriously. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. You're going to have quite a few weeks to come back to it and look at it. So 23rd Mercury retrograde. Remember that in your third, <laughs> this is going to be a big deal for you too, because this is your third. So this deals with communication, right? So there is like once Mercury retrograde happens, there are going to be certain conversations and communications and deals and, you know, problem solving that you're going to have to come back to certain things that were misunderstood or not right or not signed right or contracts like this is not a good fucking time to be initiating in contracts if you can help it, especially after the 23rd. If you do it before the 23rd, yes, there is still a chance you may have to come back to it because you missed something or whatever, but it especially from the 23rd on do not, I would say like contracts and anything. I mean, even with Venus and Leo, your financial house retrograde right now, if you are signing contracts or doing deals or whatever with other people, um, these are things that you may have to resolve or reevaluate at some point in the future. So just keep that in mind. It's not always like this huge, bad, horrible thing. Um, sometimes it can be though, but just know that it, it, it it's a little unpredictable right now. So just uh, if that's what you really feel is right, trust that and go for it. Don't listen to me. But just, I mean, if you are listening to me, then know that it could 
it, there's possibilities there, okay? Just fucking, yeah, I don't know. But on the 27th, we have Mars moving into Libra, your fourth house. So a more intense focus and a lot more action and energy will be starting to be asserted to your fourth house area. I just said that's so fucking weird. You know, I thought I was like, I thought this was going to be the like, <laughs> the most boring fucking sign, but I feel like I just did so much better than the rest of the few signs because I'm just being just, I just don't even fucking care anymore. <laughs> Oh my god, I should have just stopped carrying like fucking back at like Sagittarius when I started getting fucking tired. But anyway, so Mars and Libra in your fourth house, like you're just, you know, it's a lot in terms of family. There may be some changes, some conflicts that need to be resolved, some peace, whatever the fuck. You know, just you're you're focusing on home, family, private life, and personal life, okay? On the 27th, moving onward. We'll talk more about it in fucking September because I know we will. But anyway, so... I love you, Cancer. Thank you for watching. Comment the word badass down below if you stayed all the way through. I fucking love you. I appreciate you. You are a badass. Also, make sure to let me know you're a Cancer rising so I know. And uh, let me know if this ends up resonating, if you could see a lot of these things happening, if you know what I'm even fucking talking about, if you could give some clarity or some context to what I'm even talking about because I don't know because I'm not a Cancer rising. So I don't know what fucking this third third house Virgo shit is that you're working on. I'm just reading the chart and telling you what it could possibly be, right? So if you could let me know, that would be freaking fabulous. I would appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful fucking month and I will see you guys in the next one.